Mysteries of Egypt, Part 3. You are listening to Brothers of the Serpent Podcast. Nailed it. Cut. (laughs) And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, angels and demons and monsters and serpents. This is Brothers of the Serpent Podcast, and we are coming to you not live from the 10 by 10 by 10 tangent cube of science, where we are nestled amongst the dusty bones of an ancient seabed high atop the Edwards Plateau. And we are joined in studio by Laura. Laura of the intros. Hi. So we are going to discuss Egypt. Uh, we're kind of getting back into the, the swing of the podcast. Uh, so this, unlike the last two episodes, this one will have, you know, the final segment. We'll we'll talk about, uh, we'll give you some ag updates and uh, maybe rock and roll, whatever. Um, and also Space Brother News and all that stuff. But meanwhile, back in the studio, just us. And Laura, of course, yes. the three of us, the pod, the original, the, the original old, Snake Bros podcasters, yeah. the good old days. Yeah, we don't have the Watcher. We don't have the right. Watcher. Well, I mean, Watcher is an original man. I mean, he <laughs> isn't. Uh, he got added later. So, oh, but okay. yes, the Watcher was on a forty-eight hour shift, and he is exhausted tonight, so he can't be here. Uh, get some rest, buddy. You know, while Kyle cracks a beer. But we don't really just do this unless I come on the podcast. Just do what. Hang, just us three just hang out and talked about this we are so busy in all that's of the, right right yeah. like we're together all the time but we're so busy in all the stuff that we're doing we yeah. don't really just we don't hang out and talk pyramids yeah. so yeah. <laughs> lay it on me guys <laughs> well hold on we gotta do this i know we have oh wait no the intro we... stuff goes at the end it now. goes at the end yeah you're right you yeah. gotta lay it on her oh. gotta lay it on her <laughs> well i so I i'll <laughs> i'll start by some broad overview again. I just want to give some impressions. Um, <clears throat> like, again, you know, this is so the second time in Egypt. Hopefully there will be many more. But uh, I was even more impressed this time by uh, having to look through the cultural layers. You know, the Sphinx really brought that home to me because you're, I mean, it's, you know, modern all the way back. And uh, so you're looking through all the dynasties, everybody's been messing with this thing for forever. And then of course the oldest parts, you, as you're standing there and it's towering above you, you're, or at least in my mind, I'm like, this could be 30,000 years old Yeah. at its base. You know, I mean, I don't know how old it, like, so we had Chuck on last week and he, and the only thing he would say was when we, you know, we're talking about how old are you talking about? He said, very, uh, and for a geologist, that's that's a strong statement. <laughs> that could mean 500 million years old. I don't think that's what he meant. Of course, I, I I'm sure he was talking in the context of human civilization. Yeah, I think so. So more, you know, more as an in, in anthropology rather than geology, very old. But you're, you, it's it's very strange because you're, it's it's like you're struck by this incredible mystery, but it's also it's just sort of shrouded in uh in more modern things so you're kind of having to peel back the layers mentally right you can't obviously do it physically and then also more and more struck by how many things are unfinished so even even you see dynastic projects that just didn't get completed uh, in many cases, and you can see there they had this huge building plan and they're working on it and then there's just a few things that they didn't quite complete uh and you can tell that it's it was part of the original plan like columns that were not that were stacked up the column drums were stacked up but they weren't it wasn't carved down into the shape that the rest of the columns are in the in the hall so clearly not finishing these projects and then them and then those projects staying unfinished for all time up until the present day is is uh is not unique to this very ancient civilization that we might be looking at. Um, We got to go into the Serapium twice because we, we went early before the tour started with Yusuf. So Kyle and Ben and I met up with Yusuf and Hugh Newman uh, and we got to go into the Serapium and that was, that was great. Uh, And again, with that one, you're, I'm also struck with 
how big the project was, you know, yeah. I mean, each individual box. And, and so we'll go through this in more detail as the show progresses, but each individual box is immense. And then you're like, there's like 26 of these things in here or whatever. And then the, all the tunnels, uh, it, it's a massive complex and there may be more of it that we don't see. So again, I, you know, like with the pyramids, you're just, it's just amazing you're thinking about the pyramids and you're thinking about these projects. It's just like they had, they thought on this enormous scale. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course the question comes up every time, like, what is this for? What is the purpose? Yeah. Why almost, all those boxes yeah. in there? Yeah. Almost all of it is like that. The only thing I don't ask that question about is the temples. The temples. Right. But pretty much everything else, you're just like, what is this for? But, what is this doing here? But, you know, I was listening to the last show and some of the stuff you were saying about the temples, it, it, there's this, there's this idea maybe that, well, okay, I guess you were, what you were talking about was the, um, you were talking about the, this ball of granite that you found beneath the step pyramid. Mm -hmm. And you were saying, if the people that, made the step pyramid and all these tunnels below it made the vases. Why did they bring this weird ball of granite down there? You know, Sorry, do you, did I tell you about this? Maybe, maybe the ball of granite is looks, is basically like a preform of what would be a stone vase. Like they, they basically roughly shape a piece of granite into a ball. Then they could put it on a lathe mm -hmm. and spin it and carve a vase out of it. That's what I was thinking. I mean, it's it's roughly the size of so many of the vases. Of the bowls or I vases. Think maybe and the bowls. Yeah, remember. yeah. So the idea is that if they if if the people who made the vases were the ones who put them down under the step pyramid, why would they bring a preformed ball that wasn't a vase yet? It makes it look like all of these things were artifacts in ancient at that time when they brought them down there. Okay. So, of course, they had a preform. It's just like when I'm collecting arrowheads. I, I'm always looking for the perfect ones. But if I find a preform piece of flint that they, that, you know, they had shaped to prepare to make an arrowhead out of it, I'm like, oh, yeah, this is awesome yeah. preform. You know, yeah. I, I've got a huge pile of them. Yep. You <laughs> <So> do. <laughs> you do. I didn't make any of it. So that made me start thinking about the idea of, of museums. And um, mm. I'm trying to remember if so, – so it was someone – Someone either in our Discord or maybe on the YouTube comments. I'm sorry if I, I can't remember where it was, uh, but somebody made a comment about this, and it, I thought it was genius. And they're like, you know, thousands of years from now, archaeologists will dig up the British Museum and wonder if these people made all these artifacts. Yes, right. Yeah. So I was so rethinking the because you were talking about the temples, and you're like, it's like the, you go into these temples, and the, all the walls and the columns and everything are telling you these stories about these gods and these, you know, this all this, there's a, there's a story to the temple, but the, but then as you're walking through the temple physically, then you eventually, you find this weird artifact in the temple that doesn't match the rest of the construction of the temple. That's these right. strange granite things that are precisely cut and they're kind of, they're either, you know, sometimes there, there's a big granite slab right at the entryway. Uh, and almost every one of these temples we went to were told again and again, like this is built on a much, you know, on older sites. So these temples were built and rebuilt. They fall down or they were torn down. They're rebuilt again. So in a lot of cases, we know that there was something else there before what we're looking at now is was there. So possibly there was or certainly there was remnants of that thing. And then they used pieces of it. And so the temples seem to be honoring something older in almost every case mm. in some way. And when you were talking about how the, the temple's telling you this story, I'm thinking like, when you go in a museum, you got the same thing. It's not written on the walls, but you have stuff in the walls. You have stuff inside the museum. They're in their own special places and they've got plaques that tell you, here's what this is, yeah. you know? And it's like the step pyramid is the same way you go down there and like they were, I mean, it's not a museum that you could go into probably it's, that's not the idea, but they were housing artifacts that they had collected from somewhere. What were the contents of the vases? <laughs> <laughs> Remember in, was it? Uh, Revelation of the Revelation Pyramid. Of the yeah, pyramids. she said, yeah. we didn't look at the vases. We only looked at the contents. So what was in them? Yeah, I don't know. Did you guys get to play Indiana Jones song at any point <laughs> this, this time? I didn't do it this time, yeah. <laughs> I think we sang it a number of oh, times. Oh, yeah, yeah. We were singing it. In the pyramids when you were in there? 
I don't think it was in the pyramid, but we def- we definitely did it in the Osirian. <laughs> and then other people picked it up and then you could hear it randomly going through the group. You know, <laughs> we're doing something. Somebody's like, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> See, you have to leap across something or whatever. Well, I listened to the last Patreon that we did together after you came back from your last Egypt trip. Mm. And I have a follow up question for you. OK. Remember my interview? My amazing interview. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Yes. <laughs> Um, so you had goals, each of you, each of you had goals going back this time of things that you were wanting to do. Yeah. How did that work out? You know, I like, set my let, goals yeah, let's too see. high, babe. <laughs> let's see here. I, I want to hear. I mean, I, I heard, I listened to, um, the show with Ben, but I haven't, sorry, Marty and Chuck, I haven't gotten through it yet, mm. but I'm going to listen to it. I started it. I, I did the beginning, but I did listen with Ben, but anyway, yeah. I want to know, how is it? You want me to go? Yeah. <laughs> You're both going to have to go. <laughs> well, so one of my goals was to um, map the Serapium in such a way that I could associate which boxes with which alcoves, you know, by by their their features and also have that so that I knew what, what pictures I was taking, like in, when I look into my photos, the pictures that I took of the boxes were not in any random order. They were in an exact, like first box, second box, they're all the way down and all the way in one, um, single, you know, motion through the entire Serapium. Mm -hmm. And as I was doing it, I was drawing a map and kind of writing a few little minor detail, just a detail that I would notice about the box that would make it distinct. So now I can look at my map, I can go to my photos, and I know the very first box that I took a picture of is this one. And if I got into it, there would also be an associated video of the inside or pictures and all that wow, kind of stuff. So that I can babe. say, here's Good all job. of the here's all of the features that I have recorded of this box in this place. So when I go back next time, all of the boxes that I looked at. And videoed and took pictures of and got inside of. I won't focus on those. Next time I'll go to the ones that I have not. That's cool. Been inside of and try to get in them. Um, so that was very successful. I feel like, uh, but I was surprised at how worn out I was after getting in and out of only five of them. Hmm. So I think I did seven total, but two were the first time we went, and then the five were the. Like the day we had it, you know, for two hours. Yeah. I was worn out. What about the banging on the walls plan? Banging on the walls plan. Resonant frequency. No, I don't have that. I, that was not in my in my plan. I did that last time just to kind of like hear. I, I did that on one box. I'm pretty sure your plan was to go back and bang on more walls on the boxes. Oh, when, so he said that on the uh-huh. Patreon episode you listened oh, to. Yeah, okay, plans changed. Mm-hmm. Plans Forgot change. about that plan. <laughs> okay. Failed again, babe. <laughs> <laughs> totally forgot that plan. Uh, so, again, there was only so much I could do. Like, after I started scanning stuff, then I was like, I'm going to scan the Serapium. That's true. And you I have, got in there and I started scanning. When you made that plan last time, I, I don't think you had the whole yeah. scanning thing down. You well, didn't have, yeah. So my point is, is I, I started scanning and I realized this is going to take way yeah, yeah. too long and I won't have any chance to do what I really came here for. So I stopped scanning and and then went to do the other goal, which I feel very good about. Um, the other goal I had was to climb the <laughs> well shaft in the Great Pyramid and that's the one I was just like, nope. <laughs> I was like all gung-ho in the beginning of the trip like, I want to do this. And then Ben showed me a video, video of somebody who did do this, Christian. What do you and mean? Then I was like, Kristen climbed this. it what, in what? October. Tell yeah. me what I, I I don't know about it. I could be what wrong, but him? I think that he did it because he heard me talking about it. And he oh. was like, "I'll do it for you." Okay. Because he made he made a comment in the video. And he's yeah. like, "Kyle, this tunnel basically goes to nowhere. I don't think it's worth your time." <laughs> like he was, you know. So it's like he went and did this okay, recon so she, for okay, me okay. to check it all out, and he, he videoed the whole thing. And I was watching that video just thinking, oh, God, that looks really hard. I don't know if I want to do that. Um, That's it? The closer we got to the 
to the <laughs> the closer we got to the day, the more tired I was. Okay. And you know, there was also the bat situation, which I didn't want to get involved with. Oh, yeah, there's I think definitely bats did, in there. I think you did tell me early on. Yeah. One of the times we spoke. When you were there. Well, I was I thinking think about getting remember. a rabies shot before we Wait, but didn't went. you say you did have like a little interaction with a bat or something? Lots of bats. Yeah. Okay. In the very beginning. All right. I do not like them. I don't like bats. <laughs> now, now you know. <laughs> Flying And I was thinking of this. You're in this tunnel, this small tunnel, and it's very steep, and you're hanging onto the walls, and here they come. Like you can't put your hand, you can't do anything. You just have to hold on. So, I would like to see this video of him doing it. Yeah, I would like to see it again, too. <laughs> How do, do we just have to ben, ask? Ben has it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll ask. So, uh, yeah, I totally failed on that. I've got more excuses, if you want. Okay. <laughs> just, what, what, are, what are the other things that you... <laughs> we got to get to was, Russ. We my gotta back was on. hurting. That's, my, that's the most legit excuse I have. Okay, and I understand that. Because if that went out while I was up in that shaft, that would have been not yeah, good. Yeah, that's true. It would have been really bad. I understand bad. that. So anything else that you were planning on doing that you accomplished? Uh, I was planning on scanning stuff and I feel I'm like real happy with the scans that I got. Yeah. So. Yeah. I checked on your plans, too. <laughs> what were my plans? She knows our plans. I don't know my plans. <laughs> well, so I want to hear. What did you what were you wanting to do? Well, I wanted to circumnavigate the three main pyramids on the plateau. Um, which Good is job, kind of an answer. unreasonable, <laughs> it's kind of an unreasonable, uh, thing to want to do it, especially in one day or on a tour where you've got a couple of hours. So I managed to, we did circle Minkara, the small one. Hmm. Uh, I set off to circle the great pyramid. And I may have messed this whole plan up. <laughs> that actually might be my fault. Well, no, but I'm glad my interrogation is over. <laughs> no, it's not your fault. It's not your fault because well, what happened is, is I told I told Ben it was the it was uh what was happening? It was the Osiris we had shaft. An hour left. Yeah, it was the Osiris shaft, right? People were still coming out of there. Is that oh, what yeah, it was? Maybe it was. Yeah, people were still coming out of there, and we were done with it. And I was like, I kind of want to go do this. Can we go do that? Maybe I don't know which day. I can't remember which day it was on, but. I was like, I want to walk around this pyramid, and I asked Ben, I was like, can Kyle and I kind of sneak off and go do this real quick? Real quick, which is, it's no matter what, yeah. it's not going to be a real quick thing. We had an hour. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. And he said, sure. But then as I was walking off, he was like, hey, do you want to take people with you? And I was like, okay. I wonder what the immediate answer in your mind was. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably, in my mind, I was like, that's not a good idea, uh, but I said, okay, because, of course, we're hosts, and, yeah. you know. So I was like, sure, if people want to go. And then seven or eight people ended up coming, uh, and so we just didn't we just didn't make it. Mm. Uh, okay. We didn't even get – we got to one corner, and we walked down part of one side, and then we just well, – we were like, we're not going to make this it. Pro part of this is my fault because I was like, I want to go slightly off course to look at the nubs at the base of one of the satellite pyramids on our way there because yeah. you can get there from – that direction sure, yeah yeah but we get all the way past the satellite pyramids and it's like closed off with them so we had to backtrack yeah and it was like i don't know if we should jump this fence and go which we just we should have we should have yeah but we didn't have anybody else we didn't have use of or anybody with us right and and you don't want to make a bunch of the guests jump fences and yeah so um yeah you don't want to do that no yeah I think we made the right decision but it, we just basically got to walk only along one side of it right so we ended up at the we ended up at the basalt um, pavement and we, we just we were like you know what it's already been a half an hour and we've made it halfway down one side <laughs> so let's stop here because projecting this forward it's not going to work <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that was good because we got to spend a lot of time looking at and then I got busted it's always good when you get busted you know uh, I uh, I had a hotel key card and we're walking around on the side of the basalt pavement and there's deep saw cuts in these uh in the sides of them the parts of the the of the tiles that would have been hidden right so the 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 tops of the tiles 
uh, are all polished and everything, but because the basalt pavement is sort of busted and you kind of walk around the edge and see the sides of the tiles that are still there, you can see all these saw cuts and like mistakes that were made, whatever, when they were doing the masonry. And some of the saw cuts are deep. So I pulled out my hotel key card and I was videoing myself <laughs> sliding the key card into one of the saw cuts. I just dare to, you put a tool in there. I know. Yeah. I'm like, this is a plastic card. And I slid it in there just to show on the video, like how deep the cut is. Okay. And that's important because the standard story of, is, of course, that they were doing all this by hand and you don't make an overcut accident that deep when you're sawing by hand with a copper saw into a piece of basalt. Right, because I was almost able to completely slide this hotel key yeah. card into the thing. Um, and some guard saw me do it, and he comes over, and he's like, what is that? And I'm like, it's, it's my hotel key card. And he's like, no. I'm like, <laughs> oh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it hurt the basalt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that was good. It was, it was, we found a bunch of different marks. There's lots of interesting things to look. That's the problem, really. Well, hold on now. What about any other goals? Yeah, any Did other goals. Did you have any other goals? Um, well, I mean, we're going to keep going back every year is how you guys are acting. So, you know. Yeah. It's probably going to be fine. You can we're gonna keep have, We're going to go back more for sure. Uh, but I had what, some. Come clean with what you guys got. <laughs> what would you do? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm telling you, I wanted to circumnavigate the pyramids. I got to go around Mankara. Okay. And I got to check for some stuff that I wanted to do. But it, it was weird because at the same time. Um, we were doing that. They gave me a microphone to talk to the whole group. So I got very distracted. Oh, uh, okay. I wasn't, I was more hosting than, again, hosting than being able to do research, which is totally fine. That's, that's what, fine. We're, that's what's good about my position. <laughs> no one gives me a microphone. <laughs> I get to, well, hold on. You did take the microphone from Yusuf once yeah, and it was like glorious. Seconds. <laughs> oh, what'd you do? Why'd you take it? I made a, I made a joke about, um, Freebird, yeah, <laughs> the song. <laughs> you just grabbed it from him to make a joke. No, no, he asked it politely. Oh, okay. But Yusuf was. We were in a part of the <laughs> of one of the temples <laughs> where Bess, the, the the god Bess, the dwarf god, was being was was depicted all over the place. And Yusuf was pointing out, look, Bess has got a harp. The harp is the basis of the piano. Bess has a, a flute. Right. He was showing that the ancient that ancient Egypt is in many cases seems to be the origin of a lot of instruments. Uh, and so we were kind of, we were all sort of joking about, you know, like the, the idea that, okay, this, they did it first or whatever. And then Kyle took the microphone from Yusuf and pointed to a bunch of hieroglyphs next to Bess and said, these are the lyrics to Freebird. <laughs> <laughs> it was hilarious. <laughs> did everyone laugh? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Got good laughs. It was okay. a good joke. Yeah. Good job. Babe. It was a good joke. I was, <laughs> I was so nervous after that. <laughs> like, take this take mic the mic away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. First stand up routine. That was your first almost kill Tony. <laughs> but yeah, well we, so when we went up to Minkara, they wanted, they, they asked Ben, asked me to do the give a bit of the talk that I do with the presentation about the shaping of the Casey Which Stones. I've never seen. Oh. <laughs> now I'm in trouble. Oh, we have a problem. <laughs> God dang it, the sound it's, guy needs to send it to us. <laughs> it's on video in multiple places. Where? Like I've done it for our show. I've done it for uh where did the road Grand go? America. I did well, it for I asked America. him. Okay, I guess. No, what I she wants to see I, the presentation. Uh, I guess what I'm referring to is I asked him while you guys were in Egypt, when you guys were about to go, he was on the phone with me. And I mm. said, can you please, if possible, I'm not trying to oh, you know, record it, but, you know, so and then send it to me. I know it's going to be big. I know yeah. you can't send it to me. But since he's been home, which has been a while, <laughs> yeah, so I haven't seen anything. Chris has it. Chris has it. Yeah. yeah. He was the one that videoed it. Yeah. It's his fault. It's Chris's fault. <laughs> Well, maybe Chris knows how to send it to me. Yeah, we'll put it up on the server. Anyway, yeah, um, I really want to see it. I really want to see it, you doing it live. Oh, but okay. when you've done it live at the events that I've been to, yeah, I've you had the kids, or, quite, or I yeah. could see part of it, or yeah. too many people were asking questions. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to just getting to see the whole thing from beginning to end. Mm, that okay. one, when you were in Egypt, because wow, like... Yeah, that actually You're made in... it weird. Oh. It so... made it weird because, hmm. I mean, you know, maybe this is not something that, oh, well, we can talk about it. Like, normally when I'm giving this presentation, we're not in Egypt. Yeah, I know. And so I'm <laughs> saying, like, here's this place. Mm -hmm. If you haven't been here, here's the effect. But we were in Egypt, and a lot of the places I was talking about, we had already been to them. Mm -hmm. 
So it was just a little strange you for me. You need to do your presentation at the very beginning of the tour. Yeah. This is the only good place to do it is on the boat. Bah. We talked about this. Because otherwise we'd do have to... Do it at the pool table, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I can't wait to see it. Anyway, anyway what it was... Were we, yeah, what were we... So the... So that was one of the goals was to go around the pyramids. We made, uh, you know, and I also just look, I what I really want to do with the plateau is just I want to be able to do the same kind of exploration that Kyle and I have done on lots of property out here, like remote property. Like we're basically I just we can just walk and look and you're kind of in your own mind. You know, I don't want anybody talking to me. I don't want to be talking to anyone else. Yeah. What I want to do, because like that. Uh, so. This is one thing that we've done a lot out here when we when we're helping people with their with their very like rural properties or un you know mm -hmm. uh, so we're walking in remote areas and focusing you can focus you can, like I want to go up there and see what that is and you kind of climb up a cliff or whatever and check something out you're looking at the geology and you can kind of after a little while of doing that you sort of um, you get into a, like a kind of a mindset of like okay now I'm I'm beginning to see things that I wasn't seeing before. Uh, it takes a little while. It's kind of like a meditation almost. No, I totally get it. Yeah, and once if you and have that's too what much I want to put from other people. You can't right. You know. Can't focus. So that's what I want to be able to do with the plateau. But it's just almost impossible. Well, know? next time. So we took the well, we the early to days. This out. The early days that we were there. To one of the full days was we went to the Serapium. And we, we actually to, looked at yeah, some... Yeah, we went to Saqqara and looked at a bunch yeah, of stuff. Yeah, we looked at yeah. some other stuff around there, too, so... And it was good. We got to kind of wander. Yeah. yeah. We can do that with the plateau. Right. We just didn't. Like, we had... We did go to the plateau, but it was the day before the event, and there was a bunch of people that were already there that were with us, and it was the... You know, the commit school made it very organized, right? Because, well, we are taking a bunch of guests out. Mm -hmm. And so they were like, okay, we're on a, we're on a schedule... Yeah, here's what we're gonna do, blah, blah, which is blah. good. So yeah. that it yeah, was a, it good. was the right thing to do. But if we if we took like the day we took to go to Saqqara and we just went by ourselves, we could spend all day there. Yeah. So we can do it yeah. in the future. We'll do it. And later, when we came back to the plateau, I got to to do one of the other goals, which was around. Um, was this later? No, it was maybe it was the first day when we were there. But everybody went down into the middle pyramid, into mm -hmm. uh, Kafre. And I, I I didn't go in. I Instead, I wanted to walk around it. So I didn't completely walk around it, but I got to walk a lot of that pyramid, three sides of it. And I got to see the backside, which you almost never see in photos. Mm -hmm. There's lots of stuff back there, blocks and everything. Very interesting things that I want to be able to pay more attention to. And also the big wall that's cut out, because that pyramid is kind of cut it's set into the plateau. They cut a huge portion of the plateau away to put the back part of the pyramid there. Um, the, what really, the there? back base of the pyramid is rock cut. Yeah. I mean, it just... This is making me think, w w pictures? Yeah. Nah, we, what we went through to get here was too much. <laughs> <laughs> I might be able to put some pictures up in the video in post. Yeah, that would be better. If that's what you're asking about. I mean, just a picture to show me. Maybe. Right. I can show you, but... I'll, okay, keep going, well, Russ. Sorry. I'll pull up my photos. So I got to, I wanted to, see, you know, f before we had only seen that uh, that cutaway wall from afar. So I got okay. to kind of walk up to it, look at it. There's some glyphs on there from uh, the New Kingdom. Uh, there's entrances into it. I guess people made tombs into it. Some of it's blocked up. But anyway, I got to walk around. I just, I just really want to take to be able to take my time and, and sort of walk these areas in the same way that we've done out here where you can kind of get into this meditative state yeah. where you're seeing stuff, you know. And this is a bit of an aside, but there's just a, I don't know, there's something that happens and I've noticed it so many times, like when we're looking for arrowheads or looking for fossils or whatever, when you first get out there and you start doing it, you don't see anything. But then eventually... Something happens, and it and and then suddenly you see them everywhere. And suddenly you're like, okay, there's a fossil. There's one. There's one. There's one. And it, it takes a little bit to get mm -hmm. into that frame of mind. Yeah. It is very strange. So I want to be able to, to try to achieve that on the plateau and in some of these other sites. 
So I didn't get to do that, but I did get to walk a lot more of the base of the pyramids than I had before. Okay. So um, were there everywhere you were on those sides, were there still a whole bunch of people just everywhere? No, or around kind of got to be more alone as you went. Yeah. Around the backside of, of, uh, of Kafra, there was almost, there was a no one. It's just, you know, the, the entrance is, um, is on the North side. And I kind of went around the, let's see, it would have been the North West corner. I can't remember, but around the corner from the entrance there was almost nobody there okay like, so that was cool yeah, yeah yeah it was you got a little glimpse of meditation yes yes <laughs> you got over there and you're like oh, thank <laughs> god <laughs> and and walking around Minkara, even though even though i was i had the microphone and i was talking it it kind of happened there too because i was looking i wanted to see specifically are there flat flattened areas on the other two sides of the of the pyramid that where they flattened the ca the granite casing stones. And then of course, getting around the sides, we found out that they haven't even been dug out. You know, so there were piles of material all the way up oh. the sides of the pyramid, so uh it just hadn't been excavated at all. <clears throat> What's going on over here? Yeah, we got some... huge problems. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I got this over. I think Ty called. Ty, Ty, oh, Ty called and then, then, woo. Yeah, Ty so, called and I. That's it's my fault. I didn't put the phone some in. Some activity camera was in, kicked in off. Airplane mode. Ah. Uh, so yeah, there's some going to be some. Well, we're on a we're at a break anyway. I'm yeah, just kind of rambling on. And I'm I'm sitting here desperately trying to listen while Kyle's like <laughs> shuffling back. Sorry, you just have to ignore him. I mean, so, yeah, that's pretty you, much I mean, what I do for the well, whole I'm show. Well, I'm trying to get my foot out of the way. I ignore the producer. <laughs> Hey, look at this tiny pyramid on this little post. <laughs> oh, yeah, look at that. Okay, so, yeah. Anyway, all right, we're going to take a break. Yeah, we'll take a break. We can pull up some pictures of the um, middle pyramid. All well, right. this will be great. We'll yeah. be right back. Back, ladies and gentlemen, brothers of the Serpent Podcast, doing video. Spent uh, a whole lot of time setting up this video situation to record three people <laughs> in this tiny room. <laughs> it's it was not easy, but uh, yes, joined by Laura, my wife, and uh, discussing Hello. Egypt. And I think. Um, are you done with your goals? I, I got so distracted with uh, Ty calling me. Well, I, I had some Osirian goals, and I did, I did get those goals. Uh, they were simple. I wanted to get better images and take better looks at the dovetailing uh, mm -hmm. of some of the upper blocks where they, it looks like they are dovetailed into the columns. Mm -hmm. So I did get to look at that. Um, I wanted to kind of walk around the upper edge, but they don't let you do that. It's too dangerous. So I got to, I just basically took better looks at the upper edges of the walls from up up high. Like when you're climbing out, you're coming up this stairway and you can kind of see, I wanted to see that top edge of those of those blocks that are the highest the big part. ceiling blocks. Yeah. So I did get to do that. Um, what else? What other goals that I have? I mean, the... Uh, the grotto was also, you know, something I wanted to, I was thinking that Kyle and I could climb up there together, but once we saw the video from Christian, I knew that two people can't do oh, it at I the thought, same time. Okay. I, I was thinking that the whole time, like you, the person underneath is just going to get shit coming right, right. down. On. Yeah. There's just no way you'd have to, we'd have to wait, wait for the, wait, wait for somebody to get up into the grotto and then the other person go. And, and that's then just, you don't even know when they're there and right. when they're resting. It's like, I yeah. Don't know, I so, so yeah, it was going to only be one person. So, but next time we'll bring a helmet. <laughs> Why are you wearing the helmet? I keep banging my head on the <laughs> ceiling in this thing. <laughs> I'm, I was seriously thinking like, dude, a hard hat would be great for that, for that thing. Yeah. But so what were our actual goals that we talked about last year? 
uh, you both, you were right. You did it. Oh, okay. Yeah, good job. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Cool. Um, so the polishing on the inside of the, st of the boxes. Mm -hmm. Polishing versus rough for different sound waves bouncing off of it, maybe? Yeah, I mean, that's going to affect it, but it probably would be very high frequencies. Only. Have you ditched the whole uh, sound thing? No. Um, Where are you on that? Are you, was I talking about resonance well, as Just a, because you didn't follow up on the plan to go bang on the walls of mm -hmm. them. I didn't know if, have you. So the difference is. Have you bailed on the whole idea or. No, no, no. The difference whatever. is banging on the, on the sides of the boxes is going to tell you what resonant frequency the stone itself has. Toning on the inside of the boxes, like with your voice or with a tone okay. generator, tells you about the <clears throat> resonant frequencies of the empty space. Think of it like, like if it was a huge, massive bell, like church bell. Okay. When you hit it, you're hearing the resonant tone of the material of the bell. If you stuck your head up inside the bell and sang until you got that, you're getting the resonant uh, tone of the empty space inside the, the bell. Air. Okay. It's two different things. Okay. So to me, the toning on the inside is a quick, simple way to get an average measurement of the, of the dimensions. Okay. Right? It can, because they're basically parallel walls, it'll just tell you how wide they are, how tall it is, how long it is. So that's like a really quick way to get down and just be like, mm, okay, here's the resonant frequency. Then you can compare the resonant frequency to all the other resonant frequencies in the boxes. Okay. So it's a it's not even it's it's not even that I care about the specific dimensions in any particular unit, but are they the same across all the boxes? That's the point. Like a lot of times I got the frequency 108, 108 hertz, mm. which I thought was Pretty cool. And did you did you decide that was the height or the? I can't. Remember. Do we get to do the remember. dinghy for one hundred and eight? <laughs> oh, she wants to do the dinghy <laughs> for one hundred and eight. <laughs> I dinghy don't want to miss out on all <laughs> the stuff done. that happens over there because I know there's there's a lot of opportunities over here, <laughs> and I don't want to miss. <laughs> I don't want to miss any of them. <laughs> Great word choice. <laughs> so, <laughs> for all you Aussies out there, I don't even know what that means in Australian. Isn't it just like don't a little thing that floats? <laughs> oh, like a small boat? Is that what you're talking mm. about? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> You mean very small rocks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is great. Um, so I want to. So 108, I just, I don't know. It's it's interesting, but they're not all, they don't all have that resonant frequency, but it's a number of them do. And I still haven't figured out how many because I have, I got in five boxes last year and I'm not sure which one. Teresa. Five. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> you got me on that I one. Got sure. <laughs> I got him. I got him. Yes, you did. You got him. God, he nailed me. I was like, five. five. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> it got serious too early. <laughs> so, <laughs> if only you'd gotten in three the first day <laughs> and five the second day, then it could be incredibly confusing and it would be a great Monty Python bit. Anyway. Uh, Five boxes. <laughs> yeah, and I, I don't. I know at least two of them were not the ones that I got in this time because one of them was the what I call the Dunn box, yeah. which is Chris the box that Chris Dunn measured, which is the one that's been blown up by dynamite. It's I didn't even go. I didn't even look at that one. Don't right. even, I didn't even care. Right. Because I got in it last time. I knew for a fact that I did. And then also the one that has the Egyptian hieroglyphs on it. Mm. I got in that one last yeah, year. Yeah. So I knew both of those. I just ignored them. The basically. one that has the hieroglyphs on it. What does it say? What do they say? It says what. They say, whoever's name is written on this box is badass. <laughs> For real. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't. Did, I don't does know. anybody, we have it's, any idea? So it's, no, I don't have any kind of translation, but it's, it basically allows them to date the box. But mm -hmm. a lot of it's incomplete. The cartouches are empty. 
Yeah, the names of the people that it was supposed to be dedicated to are not there, but the pla- the name places are there. Okay. Maybe so it's maybe a government form. Wish those say- <laughs> hey, yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, fill out this form. What a first name, last name. Uh, but yeah, the, and those things have a name too, the, uh, the container for the names. But anyway, that yeah, so it's like it's whatever it is, it's incomplete. You mean cartouche? The cartouche is the, the full thing. Oh, okay. But the I'm pretty sure that the uh the shape of the Yeah, it's kind of an oval and it looks like it's tied at on the a platform, or yeah. And then the word is in that. Yeah. The, the, the name, name of the king is in there, the yeah. Name, yeah. Because yeah. the shirts you yeah, yeah, same deal. Right. That's the cartouche. So that's that's a good question. I we should look that up and find out if it actually says anything. Maybe we can do that during the break. Okay. Yeah. Don't know what it says. Um, but anyway, I knew, I knew I'd been in those. So I knew I, and then I got in three other ones. And I'm not sure which three those were last year. So they could be the same but as where three are, of the ones I got in this year. I think I'm just, I think I want to know where are you on your general idea of what sound has to do with any of this? Sorry, I wasn't up here. Okay. I don't. I am really not pursuing that okay. in particular. <laughs> um, it's because, and I've I've had a problem with this for a long time. But okay. the idea that sound resonance is going to do something major or be some kind of major energy source is hard for me to wrap my brain around because it's such. Like it's it's such a low energy at any tolerable level. If you if you want to increase the energy, it's going to be like no humans can live near enough sound energy to provide power to a society. That's why you put it underground or surround it by a giant triangle of stones. Yeah, and then you have some giant. You're like producing some. How do you harness it? Yeah. In there. Yeah. How do you harness it? It's it's also you know it's also me- mechanical energy. It's going to convert. It's basically going to be transduced into mechanical energy, the vibration of the materials themselves. And again, you get it up to the energies that is necessary to provide enough power, in my opinion, to do anything useful. It's just going to be destructive to the to the physical objects that are containing it. Okay. Especially because it's the resonant frequency. Right, yeah. like if it's the resonant frequency of that stone, and you start increasing the 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 amplitude, it's gonna break it. Yeah. Like I just, um, it's not that elastic. I mean, that's what earthquakes do. Earthquakes are are shaking the ground. They have a lot of energy, but it's destructive to the materials that it's traveling through. You know. Mm-hmm. I'm hearing you. So. I just don't know about that, and I could be way wrong on this, but it just seems to me that that is... It. Now, it might be utilized... The sound energy could possibly be utilized to aid in some other process of transducing energy from one state to another. That's... I'm totally... That could definitely be something that's going on. And I think... I think it might. we might find out in the future if we discover new you know, ways to utilize energy that combining various different types of energy together that can sort of assist each other in different ways to convert energy or or take energy from the natural medium and direct it, focus it towards something. Mm -hmm. I see what you're saying. Could be handy to have multiple different things going on rather than just like with a, a hydroelectric dam or something. It's just the motion of the water is pushing this thing around in a circle. But... Of course, we use electromagnetism. We use all these other things. So it's, it's, we're just converting energy from one state to another, taking it from like a sort of a chaotic state and focusing it. Um, I just, yeah, you're capturing kinetic energy with the hydroelectric, right? That's what you're doing. Yeah. And then there is a kind of resonance, you know, if you're, if it's uh, alternating current, it's kind of a ringing in the electromagnetic spectrum back right. and forth. Yeah, definitely. It's like um, ringing a bell. Yeah, and then of course you know you can't you can't discount the possibility of what these kinds of resonances do to people. That for sure. So it's possible that the whole that all these did have resonant 
properties and they were built to have that. But what their what their goal was was not to, for example, produce power that could run machines, but just to change people's consciousness. Consciousness, yeah, for sure. It just seems strange. It seems strange that. Yeah. Well, maybe it doesn't seem strange that they don't want you to do any toning when you're in there, but. Well, I, I understand that. that okay, so yeah. yes. Uh, but what if it is like right? Shh, because you may change something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Don't turn it on. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> stop trying yeah. to turn it on. <laughs> <laughs> right, which is you know, on the one hand, you can say, well, if you if you've got a, a like a, a, a an internal combustion engine partially disassembled, you don't want to turn it on. Yeah. Right, it's going to be yeah. bad. Uh, but on the other hand, like, are they trying to stop people from expanding their consciousnesses? I don't know. To me, I, I think primarily the reason they don't want you toning and stuff is because it gets really annoying very fast. Yeah, I can see that. You know. Uh, With that many people. Yeah. Yeah, just, yeah. Yeah, I can't tell you how many audio clips and video I've seen of various people going around in these objects. And you can hear in the background people like, ah, <laughs> you know, and you're just like, yeah, it's it's. You don't want that happening like all the time. Yeah. So, but I will say, I mean, <laughs> for sure, there's a, you know, with the with the architecture in the temples, um, we went to some mosques as well after the oh, yeah. uh, tour was over. They were beautiful, and for sure, the architecture itself, like just visually speaking, is beautiful. It's awesome. These really high ceilings, you know, it's just amazing. You said some of some blocks from some pyramids were used in the building of the mosques? Is it, did, um, you, is it, did you say something like that to me on the phone? I, yeah. Uh, it's hard to say where these blocks came from exactly, but uh, it is thought that a lot of there's a lot of stone from more ancient structures that are used mm, in these buildings. Because okay. there's some where you can just clearly see hieroglyphs on them. Just you know, like old, on Yeah, the there's just a one of- stone way up there in the corner. It's got hieroglyphs on it. Uh-huh. So it yeah, just, so it's like an Ottoman era building, but you know, it's clearly there's a block there that yeah. has hieroglyphs, which yeah, would that's interesting. Yeah, and to be fair, um, a lot of places in Egypt, a lot of temples, a lot of ancient structures are just piles of rubble. Yeah, yeah. So it's like it's understandable that people are like, well, let's grab a couple of these rocks and build something with them, you know, because they're just laying all over the place because yeah. they'd been Might as well. pillaged before. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just been going on for thousands of years. Well, and when we were at the Citadel, Yusuf was pointing out all the, uh, what is the it? Columns? Is it the columns? The white calcite. Yeah. Yeah. There's just tons of it. And he's like, yes, this is all sourced from uh, older structures, from Egyptian structures. But the the Citadel is a an Ottoman thing too. I think he said Saladin built it or that's it's in his time so okay yeah so you know you you know you're looking at reused material uh it's just but like kyle said we don't know if they went and took it off of a intact structure or if they just took from piles of rubble um yeah then there were tons of granite columns and those had clearly been modified the one that fans out kind of like this has the skinny little yeah, yeah. She's the, talking about like the ones we saw at Tannis. Yeah, that the, have the lotus the palm fronds or the, and the lotus palm fronds or, or lotus that flowers at the top. Bang. Those are so beautiful. Yeah. But we were looking at columns that it looked like somebody had tried to round them off and get rid of a lot of those features. Oh, okay. I see what you're you saying. You know, and then you could tell by the bases and the tops of the, the capitals and the bases, the foots of the columns and how they were at different heights that they're reusing the, the columns yeah. were not made for the structure right because you've got like you've got a certain amount of height from you like from 40 feet from floor to ceiling but the column you have since you're reusing stuff is only 38 feet but then the next one you have is 37 and a half feet yeah. right so the the footings are all different heights to make the columns be the right height for the ceiling yeah because yeah. they were reused So it was it was interesting to go through that. To Yusuf showed us like he took us all over and we're like you know random places like we're gonna go down this road and then down in this alley and down this stairway because there's a giant granite block down there that we're gonna look at. That's <laughs> crazy know? how things are just scattered everywhere. Yeah, they're all over the place. And yeah, it's just, it's just like a huge mess over there. That was also fun. We got to walk through some 
you know, marketplaces. I and, told her about this marketplace. This yeah. marketplace. I, <laughs> I told it was you great. too. I was like, I have to bring my wife here. Like, yeah. <laughs> she would love this. Like, <laughs> it was really cool. It was really cool. Yeah. There's this tiny little winding alleyway and it's just these people out there just with all their wares and everything on display. And just, I don't know. It was just the, the way it felt was really awesome. It yeah, felt, good, great atmosphere. Yeah. 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 It yeah. was really cool. Like big fish and octopus or like what are we <laughs> what are we talking? Like apples? I didn't see, or was, I didn't see food. It was like, like it was more like shopping, not food. Yeah. Okay. I guess I mean there was some food, but more like, you know, snacks that you get when you're shopping. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Fritos but and Red Bulls, I, but not like pizzas, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to the the resonance thing, all, all I'm trying to say is that these temples and these mosques use this type of architecture that is very pleasing to the eye. It's mind-blowing in scale. And also, the the way it sounds is amazing. Yeah. It's so awesome the way it sounds. So I don't discount that people are intentionally making things in such a way that they sound, they have a certain sound. But at the same time, you could argue you can't really get away from having this big, awesome echoing sound. If you're yeah. going to build gigantic structures with huge high dome ceilings and all this kind of stuff, like we saw in the mosques or yeah. in these temples. So um, I think they work hand in hand with each other in that scenario. When you're inside a pyramid, it is nothing like those things except when you get to like a corbelled chamber or something, then that sounds like a cathedral. Or yeah. It's like when you get the little stair step chambers that, uh -huh. you know, they, they resonate in the King's chamber. Is that where that one's no, not, where? that one's it's parallel walls. Okay. But, um, we were watching Ben's video and he was oh, shooting yeah. video of the, it's yeah. stair steps down and oh, it's yeah, narrower yeah. and narrower. That's corbelled in those rooms. Any note you sing out rings, I mean, it just resonates, right? Whereas in the king's chamber, I mean, you get that to a certain extent, but there are certain notes that you can hit that just really, they're obviously harmonics of the fundamental of that room. And didn't you get some alone time in one this time? In a in a chamber? I, we we were alone in the king's chamber last time. Oh, but okay. the, I, I you didn't have there. any alone time this time. Mm -mm. Okay. Not in the in the king's chamber. Not in. I don't think anywhere. You went somewhere pyramid. twice, and that was maybe the Serapium. We went to the Serapium twice. Yeah. We got to talk. I was like alone every in those day. boxes. <laughs> we we talked like every day. I think. Yeah. I would get the I would get the updates. Mm. You were getting the updates. I was okay. getting the, the pictures Live. of the food. I asked for pictures of the food. Oh, yeah, I was sending foodie pics. And then I would, get the, I would get the photos, and we'd talk about some stuff that was going on. And yeah. So I kind of felt like I was living it as it was happening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also at home crying, like, I miss it. <laughs> <laughs> so sad. Yeah. But I was having the greatest time I of my know. life. <laughs> Sorry. And I'm going to go. Just, she's well, going. I know. You're yeah. going. Yeah. You're going. Yeah. But it's for the future of the kids. Yeah. That's what we got to keep in mind. Right. All these little hoodlums running around. <laughs> they got to know what's really going on Rats. over there. Crumb crunchers. Mm -hmm. You know? Snake Bros kids. Yeah. Well, uh, the other thing, I, so I go back to the Assyrian, uh, because this is, you know, this is part of the unfinished aspect of the presentation that I have, or the, you know, the, one of the things that I'm looking that into. That was definitely a big goal, was to get better stuff for the presentation. Yeah. 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 And you guys got great stuff. Kyle got good stuff. Yeah. I almost never did. <laughs> there you go, babe. I was, that, babe? I was performing my host duties, <laughs> and Kyle was taking all the good photographs. <laughs> but yeah, there's there's more in the Osirian that I'm interested in, uh, you know. And then of course, the stuff we talked about with Marty and Chuck about the uh, at the quarry. So the quarry is another site that's in the presentation, and there's just uh, there's so many strange things there. Yeah, and I because I haven't heard what they've said yet, so. Yeah, that's okay. They're just okay. they were talking about the 
possible methods for and tool types for uh, cutting this rock, these okay. rocks out of the, you know, okay. what, what makes what looks like scoop marks they were talking about some of their ideas on how that worked. But the point is, is that one of the things that I realized, you know, going back, so, so we went the first time to, to the quarry there and then we took a bunch of photos and I've, we've presented on it. I've talked about it multiple times and then we went back and I'm just like struck again by again, how massive mm -hmm. this quarry, it's a huge site, you know, it takes yeah. a lot of walking to get all over this site. You know, the, 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 you can walk around for quite a while before you even get to the unfinished obelisk. And then you get up there and then to, we're like, I'm like, where's the next piece that I want to look at? And it's way around the side and down this, you know, it's it, this, these things are far away from each other. It's a huge quarry and it's not the only source, uh, only quarry of that kind of granite there, but, uh, it's the most famous one, obviously, because it has the obelisk in it. And, uh, I do want to, you know, we're, we're we were bringing up the nubs. I know we're jumping all over the place here, but we were bringing up, uh, we were talking about nubs and stuff with Chuck uh, and and Marty on the last episode. And we were talking about how they're, you know, they seem to be for lifting. Um, but Patty, I think this was Patty that pointed this out to me. Uh, the unfinished obelisk does not have any nubs on it, which is really interesting. That is a good observation. Yes. Yeah, I hadn't thought of that. Nubless. Let me make sure that was Patty. I think that is. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so the unfinished obelisk, which would have required a lot of lifting to get it to where it needed to go, it doesn't have any nubs. Now, maybe they intended to put the nubs on the bottom, but that just seems like a very difficult place to put them. Yes, I've seen these nubs. <laughs> I'm showing Laura nubs. <laughs> <laughs> these are my favorites, babe. <laughs> Now the lack of the lack of nubs on the unfinished obelisk does not discount the idea that the nubs were for lifting. Uh, it's possible, or or for even just maneuvering. <laughs> it's possible that um, they didn't think they would need them for that particular object. Right. So I don't know. It's interesting. Or they don't cut. They they cut it out first, and then they because because the nub is like a high relief. Yeah. They actually have to take away some material, <laughs> right, to leave them. the nub. Yeah, so you're right. They got to break it off the bottom and yeah, clean that side up. And so they may come later after they cut the thing completely out. Right. Yeah, I agree <laughs> with that because, except that there are cases where there are just nubs on bedrock. You know. Yeah, that is really. Strange. So maybe those were, you know, they're like that's going to be a block. Yeah. That's going to be cut out, and the nubs already there. Just hasn't been cut out yet. I don't know. Um, the nubs are weird. Yeah, <laughs> the nubs are weird. Yeah, they are weird. It's yeah. definitely one of the more weird ones. There's definitely. I mean, there's a case to be made for the lifting. I know you you were kind of excluding these, but they're on the lids of these of some of these big boxes. Yeah. Yeah. So they see. It seems pretty clear that those are lifting boxes they're for yeah. lifting, but. And yeah. they may have been removed after, like, this is the thing. A lot of the boxes, the lids are just smooth. But then, like, the big one that we looked at in the special access, it has this giant nub on it. But that box isn't totally complete. So you can imagine, like, I've, I've wondered if, this, if these things acted like in a kind of way, a, a safe, right? Like a, like a safe, like once you like close it. Like a safety it, deposit box or something? Yeah, like a safe, like well, something you would put valuables in. So you have lifting bosses on the lids. And once you get the lids in place, you take those off and polish the whole thing, and then you, it's hard to open after that with, for people that don't have the, pro, the right technology. What about some sci-fi story about all those boxes being like cryo-sleep? Have, mm. we, have we gone down that road yet of like, <laughs> could they be like cryopods? Maybe that's what mummification is. Oh, uh, uh, mummification is a... Um, it's a form of a cargo cult, cult for cryo sleep. Yeah, could be. Hmm, I've never heard that before. But anyway, I don't know. Just a bunch of boxes down there. Yeah, I mean, it could be. The other thing we were we were talking about on the last episode is how none of the lids have been pushed off the boxes. They've just been kind of slid open a little bit. Yeah, but I guess I was thinking, <clears throat> well, what are the valuable things you're gonna? go through all that trouble to put in a box way down there. Well, whatever it is, it was if there were valuable things in there and people slid the lids off of them to get the valuable stuff out of there, then the valuable stuff must have been small. 
In other words, not the or size. Or what if it was meant for humans for cryo sleep? <laughs> it never happened because they all had to bail. And yeah. then the people who came to find them slid them just a little bit, like you said. And found they them got empty. got the inertia go and got yeah. them empty. And then, so it's like unused cryo sleep pods that we don't know how they work. Well, I could, yeah. So if you want to go full um, sci fi, we're trying to go full sci fi <laughs> okay. for a second. Let's see, where can we go? If you had some cryo sleep <laughs> machine. <clears throat> okay. And you're like, we want to, we want to sleep through this catastrophic period that's coming, but we also want, we don't want our cryo sleep pods to be destroyed by the catastrophic period. Yes. Let's build giant, yes. almost impregnable stone boxes for them, put them underground in a sort of a, sim, what, a seemingly safe area. You know, and then Marty was talking about the, the the shape of the boxes or whatever could be. The, maybe it was Chuck that was saying this, but if the roof collapsed on them, you know, the 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 box is designed to sort of withstand that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so maybe that's what it was. But of course, you don't want to wake up. I don't want to wake up in a cryopod buried <laughs> in a giant granite box. Right. Yeah. Unless they gave them the capability to drill their way out or something mm -hmm. like that. So first they just try to move the lid. Yeah. It's like, okay, the lid moved. I'm out. Yeah. I mean, I know there's a lot there that's hard to <laughs> That's yeah. why the We're other... Full, best, full speculation. That's there. why the box that was empty was never opened. Because they were open from the inside. They were open from the inside. And no one was in that freaking box. <laughs> And whoever was in, like whoever out. was in one of those boxes hey, maybe, was real small. <laughs> or maybe it was a spirit that just like slithered out. I'm not buying this. So Ben and I guess you heard Ben and Russ saying that one of the boxes was open and you can't get a person down in there. Like it would have I to heard be a child. Yeah, it's saying. like this much. And I don't know about that, guys. <laughs> I need to see this box. You know which what, one? What? Hey, what if it was a bunch of trapped gin? That's I have talked about that before. Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe I got the idea from you. It's hard, folks. No, I don't know. Because about that. this podcast is so good and it's been around for so long. <laughs> no, but <laughs> sometimes you don't know. Are these thoughts my own? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. That definitely happens. Yeah. Um, Do you guys even get confused on whose thoughts? Sure. Are yeah, oh, yeah. I I had. I this, just say we say. I had this conversation <laughs> with Here's Hugh Nick Newman. Goes, we say. <laughs> yeah. When we were in Egypt. Wait, say it again. I'm I sorry. had the conversation this with Yusuf. very point with Hugh Newman when we were Oh, in you, Egypt. Hugh Newman. Uh, oh. That's why I'm saying I don't know if you got the idea from me because I oh. talked to him about it. Well, I want to go with the fact that I came up with it on my okay. own. Okay, well, we'll just roll with that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so let's talk about that. What if it was Trap Gin, babe? We talked about this and it's... Let's hear it. I mean, I think it's a cool idea because uh, there was like... Um, an interesting story in the story of the gin where uh, Solomon, you know, bottles up some of these. If you don't know the story, basically he gets power over all the demons. Yeah, give me the. He call he puts the down. ring on or whatever, you know, and he calls them all before him, and then he goes through them one by one, and then there were some that were just really bad. Yeah. That he was like, "Nope, you're out of here. Bottle them up." Mm -hmm. uh, and the other ones, he kind of just like put them to work and had them doing stuff for him. So. One of the stories is that, you know, he bottled them up and he put them down in this old abandoned well or something like that okay. yeah, and buried them in there. And then they ended up tainting the water. Like something okay. started happening yeah. later. I don't remember the whole story, but, you know, people were things were going badly and he figures out or somebody figures out that the gin were down there. And like, even though they were still contained in the bottles, that they were somehow affecting the water and that was affecting the people okay. they were down at the water yeah. table yeah so it's like you look at the osiris shaft and you're like hmm <laughs> now this shaft goes way down all the way to the water table and there's a freaking granite box down in there underwater mm. right so it's yeah the serapium is could be it's and just interesting that i hand that Russ, well i'm that? just saying that that you know you could take that in the same way as like, you know, this is in the form of a myth, it's but it's really telling you about a technological issue, yeah. you know. Oh, like there was radioactive it was body. Radioactive. Or just whatever. It was yeah. something technological and Solomon's like, okay, that one is very powerful, but it's it's actually too dangerous. So we're just going to contain it. You know, maybe it's even, maybe even it's an ancient artifact from some previous civilization and he puts it, 
you know, below ground and then it's tainting the water. Mm. So you got to get them out of the boxes at that point. And you are having to drink bottled water when you're in Egypt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good point. That's, well, wait, that's yeah. probably why they have us do it. <laughs> okay, with that, we're going to take another break. Another break yes. <laughs> we'll be right back. Snacks. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers of the Serpent Podcast, we are here with our Certificates of Ignorance discussing Egypt, discussing the latest trip, comparing it to the last trip. Uh, we're joined by Laura. She's asking good interview questions. Thank you. And also sci-fi questions. I dig the, the sci-fi <laughs> questions. Dude, I love it when you kind of start making up sci-fi stories on the spot. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, let's figure this out because this is good. <laughs> well, uh... We do have a bunch of other stuff to talk about. Kyle's got some interesting observations on the statues. But before we get to that, Laura asked about the inscriptions on the boxes in the Serapium. And I was looking this up and I see basically there. it says that there. this is Wikipedia, right? So it's pure standard model. Uh, they say that they are spells from the pyramid texts. Oh, okay. And there's some excerpts here. Uh, on the south side of the box, it says, O Apis Osiris, someone shall stand behind thee. Thy brother shall stand behind thee. He stands and shall not perish behind thee. Thou shalt not perish. Thou shalt not pass away during the whole of eternity, Apis Osiris. So that's the kind of things that are written on the boxes. Mm -hmm. And they uh, it's interesting, they acknowledge in here that the... Um, it says, the polished exterior of the box is contrasted by the inscriptions and decorations which are merely scratched on and crudely formed. Hmm. Yeah. There's a good editor on that one. And they call it uh, Ptolemaic. They're saying it's a Ptolemaic period box. Wow. Which would put it very, What's yeah, that very mean? late period, yeah. Tell me the significance of what you're saying. Like 55 to 30 BC. So not very, not, not nearly as old as... We think it the, is basically, okay. yeah, the end of Egypt. Not, yeah. Okay. So is it? It's it's the pre-dynastic period that seems to have all this stuff that is machined. Is that, the, or or does that is that not even accepted by the standard model? No. Other than the vases, right? And not even that really. Yeah, because they're thinking that's third, first like, or first dynasty. Yeah, they're like these are inherited objects, but they're first or second dynasty or whatever. Okay. But even though there was one found in that fourteen thousand year old. Paleolithic burial. Yeah. You know, which Yusuf found information on that, sent it to Ben, and Ben uses it in his in his presentation. Yeah. And you can see there's like a there's like a, a skeleton laying on its side. There's crude pottery and other object objects in there. And then there was just this beautiful stone cut vase <laughs> in there, which is a very it's the same as the ones that were found under the step pyramid. So the basic idea is that we think it's possible that all of these um, megalithic, really hard stone, uh, like high precision artifacts and constructions out of these megalithic, really hard stones like granite and basalt and stuff might be before any yes. of the, like, you know, any of the dynastic, dynastic period, Egyptians yeah. created. Yeah. So that would put the Serapium boxes in that camp. And then Wikipedia is saying they're 500 BC or whatever. Yeah, 50. 50 BC. Yeah. Ptolemaic. Not so. nearly old enough. Yeah. Um, but they're dating it based on the inscriptions, which they clearly state in the article that the inscriptions are crude mm -hmm. compared to the polish of the boxes. They're yeah. just scratched in. So it's just... So what I think the way to take that is those are Ptolemaic inscriptions, but... That doesn't mean the box is Ptolemaic, but that's what they call it. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. 
Most That's of the boxes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Most of the boxes are don't have any writing on them, so it's if uh, if that box is you know what they were doing with them. In other words, if this is the intention to bring them in there to inscribe them with all this stuff in preparation for the for to to inter the apis bull under the name of the current king, then how come all the other boxes exactly. don't have any writing on them? Yeah. You know, so it's just. It doesn't really make sense. I yeah. agree with you. It yeah. probably just doesn't match up. There was a place found nearby, though, that did have Apis bull yeah. mummies inside. That's and right. They yeah. weren't giant, precise granite boxes. Right. Um, I don't know what they were. I've never never really looked into that. Oh, they're so. wooden, some of them. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> So um, some of the other observations I was talking about, if we're done with that yep. yeah, subject. we're ready. Um, one of the things I find really cool, I don't know, for whatever reason, I want to know what this second artifact is that's in the uh, Aswan Quarry. That's not the unfinished obelisk. But there's a You go past the unfinished obelisk up over a big mound of granite, natural bedrock granite, and you come down... And there's this other humongous thing that they were in the process of cutting it out. And it's oddly shaped. You know, when you're walking around it, you can't get a sense of like, what is the overall shape of this thing? Like, it's hard to see it. It's hard to imagine it uh, because it's so big. And the top of it, when you walk out on the top of it, it's not clean. You know, it's not a clean surface like like the unfinished obelisk. It's rough. It's obviously sh had been shattered and broken. There's damage on the top as though it looks to me like there was a lot more mass of stone on top of this thing when it was being cut and now it's gone like it yeah. may have been quarried off of there later by other people because the wall on one side where they were cutting it out is quite high mm -hmm. yeah it goes way up but you're standing down here on top of the thing they were cutting out um it looks to me like most of the mass of this object on on one end has been broken away and is just gone. Okay. Like, there's not huge boulders of it laying around. It's just gone. Yeah. There's a few boulders laying down in the trenches that seemed like they came off of this object. So it's really busted up. So it's hard to get a sense of what this thing is. Well, I scanned the whole area. I scanned down into the trenches, and the trenches, of course, come down. They go underneath um, you know, it goes along. The trenches get deeper as you go to to one end of it. And when you're finally at the far end of it, you're way down under the top of the bedrock, you know, and there's just these cuts to just come all the way and go underneath. And wow. it's, it's amazing. Um, so I scanned the whole thing, top, underneath, the walls around it. And when I was looking at the scan later, because you can just kind of flip the whole scan around. You can zoom the scan way out and look at it as, as though it's yeah. this small object. Yeah. When I looked at the... I, I'm looking down at the top of the object, and I just have it, the scan sitting on, you know, on my screen like this, and I can see the whole thing. But when I flipped it over and was looking up from the underside, it's kind of like in a video game. You go through the wall accidentally, and you turn <laughs> around, and it disappears. Yeah. The wall disappears, right? That's what the scan does when you look at the wrong side of it. Like some of the s walls disappear. And so you can okay. just, what you see when you're looking at the underside is the undercuts that go all the way around the object. Mm -hmm. And it, it's almost like clear as day that it looks like a, a statue from a profile of the statue with a head jet, the bowling pin hat that goes back. That's kind of what it looks like. It's, you see this, and then um, it changes size uh, where I think roughly the shoulders might be. And you can see when you look at, when you flip it back over and you kind of zoom into the scan, you can go along the trenches underneath, and there's this clear point. You come down from what might be the head jet, and both sides of the object, the cut changes depth. It changes how far it is so yeah. the 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 statue would get wider here like it should if it's a if it is an actual statue so 
uh, I, there's no way to prove this, but this is what I'm saying. For some reason, <laughs> I'm always like, what was this thing? Like as though that's <laughs> yeah. important in some way, right? What we really want to know well, it catches is your what, eye. what tools were used to cut it out. But I'm somehow yes. uh, obsessed with like what it yeah, was. What was and, it? I, and if it is a statue... It's just interesting to me that they cut it out on its side. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, it doesn't it doesn't it seem like you'd cut it out laying on its back. Yeah, you would think that's what you would think. Yeah, like they they'd cut the statue laying on its back. Yeah, and and of course the statues are all like in a stepping motion. Like but these maybe they statues. Maybe they decided not that, all of them, but a lot of them. It's possible they decided that uh, cutting it out laying on its back it would have been too wide, and there was. Fractures. Not enough stone. Not the fractures. Yeah. yeah. So they're like, we can get this out of here, but it has to be. Yeah. Like they, they knew that the materials were good going deeper than they were going wide. So right. they turned the whole statue on its side. Yeah. Yeah. And it makes yeah. sense. Like you, you could do it this way. Um, I just find that fascinating. So I, I realized later at this point, we, we had already gone to Luxor. Um, so we had already been where all these amazing precision polished giant standing granite statues were and a lot of the other ones that we saw later were seated were seated so it's not the same it can't be a seated statue in my opinion it doesn't it we would need yeah. all this mass out here where the knees were yeah so yeah i was just like dang i need a profile of a giant standing statue you know from the side and see if you could just overlay it on a video to yeah. see if they, how similar are they? You know, maybe the proportions don't line up, but I just, I find it a really cool thing that I want to keep looking into. So that's a, that's a future goal. Okay. Future goals. We're setting future goals. <laughs> yeah. I'll have to go um, take notes after fact. So another thing I think about, let's just say that that's what it is. I wonder how big is this statue? Would this statue have been? The biggest standing statue, right? It, would it fall in that category? Maybe, maybe not. But what I'm thinking of... Well, is, based on the... So the, the famous thumb that's at Karnak, yeah. based on the other pieces of the arm that they have since found and put out there with that bit, it its arm was straight. So it would have been a standing statue. That's clearly the largest known possible standing statue ever found to date the one it, with the thumb the, yeah the pieces yeah yeah because okay. they found the par parts of the rest of the arm and it's straight whereas, whereas seated statues their arms are right. bent at For the sure. elbow this one doesn't bend at the elbow so that would have been a standing statue and it would have been enormous yeah yeah a thousand tons that's what i'm saying so if if it is if there's a way to sort of confirm that this would have been a standing statue could it possibly have been bigger than that one right like if you figure oh, out yeah. what the proportions are Cause, because because yeah, the bottom end of it, where his legs are, it's gone. I mean, it's been quarried yeah, away. This is gone. only really you're only seeing the head down just a little below the shoulders, and that's all that we're you're seeing right. of it. You're I mean, right. It would have kept going way up there. Yeah, you're right. Maybe it would have been. It would have been tilted. The head would have been on the downhill <clears throat> side. So point being, like another largest thing ever still in the quarry. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So if, imagine, and and so that's what got me thinking, like. Is this their way of saying like, okay, we're done with the quarry and you make these cutouts and you leave them there because those are the markers. There's some type of, they're intentionally left in there as a symbol, like a geoglyph, right? That's what I was wondering. Like, did they do this on purpose? Yeah. I think Hugh, Hugh Newman also mentioned that to me. He was talking about how didn't he say this to us on the show as well that he thinks he may that, have said that yeah, yeah that, sure. that he thinks that these things were left in the quarries intentionally. Yes, for sure he yeah. said that. Yeah, he's like he thinks it's on purpose. Like it's not it's not like they down tools and never came back. It's not like something happened and they couldn't keep working on it. It was like on this is on purpose. Let's leave the largest thing we've ever cut still in the quarry, and in some cases not completely excavated to show. You can do it. I don't know. what. Yes, we can do this. Well, it looks like they couldn't. That's the problem. Like a lot of times the explanation that's given today is that it was too big or they couldn't do it or they that, couldn't that, manage it or it was cracked. It sitting that there doesn't the hold water. Yeah. There's no way. I don't believe it. But it looks like you're just like leaving a trail. Like this is where it came that's from. That's what I'm thinking. It's yeah. more like, like it's like here's what where we were. This yeah. is where we got it. This right. is what we were doing. Yeah. Like, like this I, can be done. <laughs> 
I don't know if, that there's any way to prove that. It's just intriguing to me. And like so many other things in Egypt, it seems like a lot of work to do something that you don't have to do that much work for. You know? What do you mean? Well, leave a symbol or there's an sign? easier, there aren't there easier ways to say, like, here's the core you already got. That, then... Well, not necessarily that specifically. Okay. Yeah, okay. Just, just like a, it's like you're putting your mark on this spot. Yeah. Right. Like, we're not building a temple here, but we're showing you this is what we did. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know why they would do it. It's just kind of cool. Yeah. Or they just had to leave when they were in the, we don't know. Yeah, that's that's kind of where we normally go is that like they, they were in the process of doing stuff and they yeah. just, something happened. But we just don't know. And they never came back. Right. And the technology was lost and so on and so forth. So it just couldn't be completed. But you're right. It is possible because we know so little. It is possible that this isn't a mistake. It isn't a, it's not uh, an accident, you know, of time or money or fate or whatever it's that they this is what they intended to do yeah and what we're seeing is not a job left undone but actually the a completed job the marks of yeah the makers of, yeah you know what i'm saying they're yeah. just like Pum. let's dig one out partially and leave it like yeah. that yeah so that As people will find, yeah see it and be like ah that's this is okay we've seen these things sticking out of the sand here's clearly where they were making them <laughs> somebody was intentionally like you know, yeah. cutting the, I don't know. It's just cool. Maybe, maybe. You know, maybe the guy that was in charge of all that was just cool. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe he was he like, was. you know what would be really cool? Yeah. Is if we just did this and then we left. And they were like, yeah, that is cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. I don't know. The other thing I thought of, you know, on the intentional side is that. So you have a quarry workforce. And they're told, like, cut out giant statues and giant obelisks and keep doing that until we tell you to stop. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> because That's a good one. Because, at, right? Because you, you don't know what's going to happen to your removed obelisk on it. So maybe yeah, it gets dropped, sure. cracks. So just keep cutting them out. And then eventually somebody calls the quarry and says, okay, we have enough. We're done. Yeah. And then the quarry stops. But they were in the process of cutting out other ones because yeah. the job goes on. And so. I like that. I can get with that. Yeah. And I think that, the, you know, Ben talked about, like he even, I think, did a video on the the excavation of the site and the unfinished obelisk was buried in yeah. 30 feet of rubble and giant chunks of granite and all this kind of stuff. It, it was very difficult for these archaeologists to actually excavate it because there was huge boulders in there. So it was buried. And that's why it's not chopped up into pieces. Yeah. If but it hadn't been somebody buried. tried to chop up the upper parts because that was. But when more they were exposed. told to stop, no one was like, "No, let's just finish this last one." <laughs> but it was like, "Thank God, <laughs> done." Or they just were like, "Okay, yeah." yeah. <laughs> that, now yeah. we're talking. Yeah, the portal opened behind him. He's like, now "Oh, okay, good." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. But what you're saying is like the reason. Because we've asked this question too. Why mm -hmm. they people were stealing bits of uh, quarried material, yeah. you know, from completed projects, the pyramids are quarried. Why didn't anybody take the bits of the obelisk? Well, they somebody clearly tried in a couple of spots, yeah. but only oh, on okay. the upper end, the part that's it's sticking out that's the most. Sticking out the most. Okay. And I actually, one of the things that I noticed in the Assyrian, which was kind of fun, this is this might be difficult to to describe without photographs, but there's a place where you can stand and there's two giant, massive monolithic columns in front of you. The column on the right is actually two pieces. So I shouldn't have called it monolithic. There's, it's, it's, uh, it's two blocks. It's two blocks, factor. right? Okay. So the one on the left is a single massive block from floor to, uh, to the cross beams up above. The one on the right is one giant block and then a smaller one above it and somebody had, and you can see, like, you know, where they were cutting the, uh, the, the holes into the block and then putting wedges in, using the wedge method to, to split away, to split the rock, to take, you know, to take part of it. They had done that on the smaller block that's sitting on top of the shorter column. And then on the 
uh, single column, the one that's the whole piece all the way up, somebody had cut the same number of wedge marks down that one and tried to split it and only got the upper corner. It didn't split properly because you to do that properly, you have to go all the way down this side. Okay. Right. It won't break properly. So they so it looks to me like the thing was buried up to that level and they thought, oh, this block is probably the same height as this other one and we'll get these two faces. And they failed on the column that's a single piece. Okay. But you can tell that the wedge marks go down the same amount as the height of the block that's sitting on top of the other column. I just mm -hmm. thought that was an interesting. Yeah. I, you know, maybe that's not fat. It, maybe that's not really going to tell us about what the Osirian is or who built it. But this is like the kind of thing I'm talking about that I mentioned at the very beginning of the show is seeing through all these layers of yeah. people messing with these sites, right? So just an observation like that where I'm, I've, I've been here before, but I'm standing, I've looked at pictures <laughs> of these same two columns over and over, but standing there again, I'm like, oh, that's yeah. what happened. Yeah. Because there's so much input, again, like we were saying earlier, you go on this tour, it takes you forever to get over there. Yeah. And then you have all this going on. So yeah. And you're just bombarded with so much information. Yeah. yeah. So 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 everywhere you look, you're like, wow, there's thousands of years of information right there. Yeah. <laughs> right. How do I, where do I start? <laughs> and then you look at the next place and you're like, oh my God, again. Yeah. It's. <laughs> well, can I ask about the bird feet? <laughs> the bird feet. <laughs> yeah, Perfect so we, timing. Can we put them up? Oh, wait. Oh, oh, look. The timer. No, that's fine. I didn't start it. Yeah. Oh. I forgot to start the stands, Sands of Time for this episode. Uh, so we have no idea where we are. This episode. It doesn't matter. For this segment. <clears throat> well, can I see the picture of the bird so, feet? So we went to, after the tour was over, went to um, a museum in Sharm el Sheikh yeah. at the Red Sea. And uh, this statue was in there of Horus as the falcon and it was beautiful statue yeah polished it looked definitely looked like one of these you know what we think is pre-dynastic machining whatever whenever it was um wait there we are let's see so yeah we yeah, mentioned we, we mentioned it briefly on the episode with Ben uh that we took an interest in this Horus statue and one of the museum attend uh, attendants, the guards in the museum oh, got, okay. got kind of bent out of shape because I he was, and he's this. asking Yusuf, he's like, what are they doing? And Yusuf's like, they're looking at the statue. And he's like, why are they so interested in it? And Yusuf's like, it's a beautiful yeah. statue. So I, here we go. I've, I was looking at this statue, marveling at the um, beautiful machining, but I read this plaque and down here at the plaque, it says, um, a statue representing the god Horus as a falcon. Horus was the god of kingship. The statue most probably was crowned. In other words, he had the hedget, mm -hmm. yeah. a little bowling pin hat. Okay. The ancient Egyptian sculptor restored the front part of the statue by adding a different piece of stone on which he carved the falcon's claves, <laughs> which they meant to say claws. <laughs> <laughs> Unless, wait, maybe I should look this up. Is clave... Maybe it is, but we were laughing about that. Yeah. <laughs> These claves. Um, <clears throat> so they say third intermediate period, late period, 22nd to 26th dynasty. Black granite. So Yusuf and I were um, examining this in detail. And in, in fact, there's a number of places where the statue was attempted to be restored. You can see on the statue's right side wing how beautiful this curve wing is coming down and on the left side it's been broken but someone came later and flattened the edges and kind of made this little puzzle piece where they could fit another piece of stone into it to oh, complete like the they statue made a piece to fix it they it was broken so they cut it flat oh and then they just you know they the chisel and hammer it flat and then make a little sort of puzzle like a dovetail puzzle mm -hmm. piece where they can then carve a new curved wing and slide it into place and maybe cement it or glue it in there. Yeah. In the middle of the statue here, there looks to be um, something that's, that's been maybe carved off of it like it was inscribed. Or they uh, <laughs> hammered through the polish so they could put plaster on there and put their own Possible. inscription on it. Yes. Yeah. And then, of course, the feet, the claves. At the front. I looked it up. Claves are a wooden instrument, wooden percussion <laughs> instrument. So it's definitely claves. Not. That's claves. <laughs> yeah, claves. Yeah. <laughs> See? Claves. 
<laughs> well, I mean, okay. they kind of let do me look, look at like this plaque. Long sticks. <laughs> So he, he says the, the sculptor claves. restored the front of the part of the statue by adding a different piece of stone on which he carved the falcon's claves. <laughs> <laughs> but look at so the, the knuckles. <clears throat> so the when you look at the feet, there's knuckles. Yes, there are. There are, and they they do have claws. But they, these are so much more rough. Like they're beautifully done by this guy who was probably hand carving this. Yeah. They are beautifully done. But when you look in detail at the transition between this repair and the original statue, there is no actual comparison of, of precision, of quality. The quality of the original statue is just far superior. Where? Very difficult. This, it's very difficult to tell in the photographs. To this you... repair. So, but, mm -hmm. the, but the plaque claims that the, the carver himself restored it. In other words, the creator restored the broken thing. And it's just like, we were just like, no way. That was not the same guy. Or that could be just a kind of a bad mm -hmm. translation. And it just means an ancient yeah. Egyptian But sculptor. they claim it was, yeah. Yeah. So here's also the it beak. could be a bad translation. The beak was also a repair and that they sort of, they must have fixed something behind it and they made a little, like again, a puzzle piece where they could slide this new stone beak into it. Mm. It was, it's, That's you know, crazy. it was well done. The guy, who, whoever was doing the repairs was doing a good job. It just, he could not by hand achieve the same quality level. of the original piece. It's and just, here's, wow, here it is, is right awesome. here. You can see this back. I know this is not a, the greatest photo, but this, the back claw, because the bird's foot has the three coming mm -hmm. forward. It also has the one coming back, and the statue's broken here. In so front, the, right in, in front. front of the foot. So yeah. the, the front three claws are repaired, and the back claw is original. Original. And it is amazing in oh, detail. Oh, I see what you're saying. There's so much detail in this original that is not, I mean, this guy did a good job trying by hand, but he just could not achieve this level. Of, and the polish and everything is just not yeah. there on the front, on the, on the repair. Exactly. I, I took video of it. I took I scanned it. Um, are there no more photos? I think I came back to it. I guess not. Anyway, it's 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 an amazing piece. And yeah, when we were there, the the guy there was like this guard who just as soon as I went up to it and just, like I had spent a couple of minutes like just like oh my god, look at this thing. I got my phone out. I started taking pictures, and then this guy just creeps up on me and just stands there and just <laughs> watching me. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I'm like hi. <laughs> And he just, I don't know, he didn't like the fact that I was that interested in that thing. Yeah. So. I think I heard the cat. Oh, yeah, I definitely heard the cat out there. Yep. <laughs> if we don't let her in, she's probably going to keep me out. So, yeah, that's, um, I would, I don't know why I can't see the videos that I took, but anyway, um, that's a really cool. Oh, artifact. is that a cow? Yes. Let's take a look this at that the, cow. With this bowl. But we're looking at photos now on a on on that Russ is not gonna we're not seeing in the video. Right. But yeah, I took pictures that there's you know, some of these this bull is hand carved. And it's amazing. It's carved with a hammer and chisel out of limestone. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's really well done. It is not, however, even close. <laughs> no, to that, to the bird. To no. some of the precision and polish on these much harder stones. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. What else you got? So that was the, <clears throat> back to your question, that was the purpose of the bird feet photographs. I was just showing, I was trying to show a photograph of the difference between okay. those front three claws on that Horus statue versus the statue itself, because those front three claws on. Yeah. Both it, feet are repairs. You can kind of see it. Yeah. In the photo, it's very I, difficult to really. Uh, this is another thing with with these stone objects. In some cases, the polish is almost impossible to properly capture with a camera. The effect that it has when you're there looking at it is different than what you can capture with yeah. a camera. The way the light works and and everything, the way the light plays across it. I I spent a lot of time on some of these polished objects in the museum in Sharm El Sheikh and in the museum at uh, in Cairo, trying to find ways to capture yeah, so that you can 
see it in video. It's just you can't. You almost can't do it. Kyle found this a good way, a which good is like he moved. He moved his camera around very slowly and caught the way the light reflects and played off of the features that are carved in. Some of them, some of the features are almost invisible, like the musculature on the on the human statues. You know, they're like they're bare chested, and there's all this detail in the musculature across the stomach. And oh, they got up. six packs going on. Yeah, over there. oh yeah, they're all they're all they <laughs> all have six packs, and it's just it's but you can barely see it, guys, in part because it's the museum subtle. is dark. It's, yeah, okay, right? I see. Uh, or the lights just coming in weird places because the windows are way up high. And anyway, Kyle found a way to where he was just moving very slowly and like letting the light play across these features right. that are otherwise just completely invisible. And then you can see it. You see you these. You see all the curves. You see it's all. Like, yeah, this. it's awesome. Yeah, it's amazing. It's, it's. I mean, I was looking at this guy's legs. I was just like, <laughs> "Holy shit, these are beautiful legs!" <laughs> I was there, videoing his stone legs for uh, for a good look at minute. Just look at his knee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You want to talk about the toes? <laughs> yeah, these are just other features that, you know, the, the differences. In, and I, I did mention this before, but Yusuf told me many times when I brought these differences to him, like that I'd noticed. He said that, uh, you know, this could simply be the difference between one artist and another. Oh, yeah. That, you know, statues were being carved. There's been giant carvings were being made and they were they had hired many different artists to do these jobs and some were just amazing and others were not or others were less amazing so that could be it but i think that it's yeah johnson and johnson giant sculpt sculpting did not do good jobs <laughs> on their statues <laughs> don't they say artists model things kind of after their themselves that they're going to draw an eye they kind of naturally will draw like an eye that looks like their own eye or if they're going to sculpt a foot, sculpt a foot that looks kind of hmm. like their own foot, maybe. Yeah, I can see that. When you're starting mm -hmm. out, you're like, oh, I got a, a model here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, maybe some of them were good, maybe some of them were bad, or maybe some of them just had ugly toes. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's just clear yeah, differences that are, that are more – see, the, these things just need to be measured better because yeah. in a photograph or, or in person, I can look at it and I can see the symmetry – between the curves over the knuckles and the fingers from one finger to the next oh, in a yeah. certain statue, right? How perfect these curves are. Like it's not, maybe not realistic because, you know, the knuckles actually have quite a few complex curves, but in some of the statues, they are just beautifully done. Yeah. You know, you can see the regularity across them. Then you go to the next statue and they're just, it's like they carved a, sort of squarish ball for the hand and then they started cutting grooves down through where instead of carving a hand they're just yeah they're, they're just, just getting close they got they got a yeah. hand they I got see this what you're saying. this cube shaped thing where the hand is and then they just start kind of cutting grooves into it yeah it doesn't have it just doesn't you, you can just tell the difference but, and and in those statues i noticed this difference in the hands and the fists that they were making and how well some of them really just look like knuckles and fingers going around whatever they were holding in their hand. Whereas the others just kind of look like a block yeah. that they had kind of cut these grooves into. Those same statues that were that didn't have the, the well defined hands also had features in the body that just were out of proportion. I the see. legs were too fat for the body. The arms were too fat, like they and and they clearly didn't cut um, around the arm as deep into the sides, right? So the the whole body is like one massive stone, and you're and you're starting yeah. to shape the arms. Well, you're going to cut around the arm, going in unto in, into the armpit next to the side. They went so far and just stopped, and so then there's just a flat mass of stone back there, whereas the the finely done statues, they cut way around in yeah. there and then they put details on the musculature of the arm and the arms were thinner and more in proportion to the size of the body. They, it was the same way with the legs. The legs were cut further around to the back. So there was all this detail that... Yeah, that's interesting. And then those finely cut ones were also polished to this sheen and they had, you know, the way they reflected the light, you could see even the, the very subtle details of the musculature. Hmm. 
that just weren't present yeah. in the other ones. So either the other ones aren't finished or they were done by less skilled artists or they were hand done. And these other ones were done by machine. And, and I think there's an argument for that just because of the similarity from one statue to the next. Yeah. Like you might be able to, because the, the Greeks and uh, they carved these beautiful, uh, beautiful statues that were very accurate in softer stone, in alabaster. Um, and marble. And marble. Yeah. And they were just, the proportions were amazing. The musculature is there. It was all these details in the face and everything. Um, they weren't on the, this massive scale, but they were amazing. I mean, we, you saw them. And there we isn't saw them together when we were in Italy. There, there isn't a there isn't a precision thing happening That's what with I'm the saying. Greek statues either. From one to the other, they are so very different from yeah. each other. Or even even in the same statue, like one the human the, face. the actual human form is not precise, right? Yeah, it's, it's like not people are not perfectly point. bilaterally symmet mm -hmm. uh, symmetrical. Some of the Egyptian statues are, uh, but you know the Greek ones are not because they're actually depicting more, much more realistic. Yeah. You know, there's some beautiful ones you can see where the folds of the cloth yeah. are coming down. It's just absolutely yeah, gorgeous yeah. work, but it's it's showing you, a, you know, this is like ultra realism. Whereas, mm. whereas clearly the Egyptian statues, at least these the ones we're talking about with the lovely polish and everything, are they're kind of abstract yeah. in the sense that they're too perfect. That's right. They look otherworldly. Okay. There's there was a one of the best uh, and most striking um, fa statues I I saw. All that's left is the face and the head jet. Uh, it was in the Sharm El Sheikh Museum. It's huge. The thing is enormous. When you stand next to it, the the face is you know four feet across or something. It's massive. Wow. It's this gigantic statue, but it's just when you're looking at it. So it's rare that you can stand in front of one of these because it was intended to be way above you if it was going to be okay, seated or yeah, standing the face is way up there so you could stand right in front of this thing wow you is know this we're, the red granite one yeah that was not in Sharm El Sheikh that was we were with the full tour when we went through there right you're right that's in is it yeah. in Luxor I think so the Luxor, think the Luxor, Museum. Luxor, the Luxor Museum, yeah. Museum you're right I'm sorry the Luxor Museum. <clears throat> I think um, I saw I pictures I know which one you're this. talking about. Yeah. yeah. I know which one I took a bunch of photos of it because it's it was it. very striking. Yeah, that one was And I, I spent a lot of time looking at the smile and, you know, like duck if you duck down, you can see yeah. how it changes it and everything. But also just the, just the aspect of the face, no matter what, when you're walking around it, there's just this... I can see why they were like, these are the gods, right? That's what I'm saying. It's a, there's a... It's too perfect to be a human. Mm -hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? It's yeah. otherworldly. It is when you're standing in front of it there and it's it's blank of detail that uh, uh of normal detail. The eyes are just these big ovals, you know, there's no humanity in it or yeah. whatever. But at the same time you're like there is something here. You know. So I I just I had all this stuff going through my mind standing in front of that particular face. Yeah, that was amazing. About the ka and the kef and it just, I'm just like, okay, here I am in front of an object that's a piece of stone, but it's been carved into a too perfect likeness of a human. And so to the point to where it's so pristine and perfect that it's abstract, you know, it's like a sketch, but where you've, the, the artist has taken the sketch and then like done it in pen and then erased the sketch, right? So that you have these very clean, precise lines, but it's still a, it doesn't have all the detail that an actual person's face would have. I see what you're saying. Right? The the eyes are empty. But at the same time, you're like, they're not. There's something looking at me here. It's it's powerful and very strange to stand in front of that face. You know, because it's it's that's why I'm saying there's this the the idea that like these are the images of the gods was it, it that came clear to me there. It kind of it's like there's a human, but it's too perfect. Yeah. And the, and the eyes are empty, and yet you feel it looking at you. It's so weird, you know. What's, I just I, what's the that was my the personal. Kev, or what did you just say? The, the 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 different souls, the different spirits, aspects of the soul, aspects yeah. of the soul, and how they would say that, you know, a, a good likeness of a person, they're uh, one of those. The whatever the body soul is could inhabit the statue of them, hmm. as long as it's intact. 
and you just kind of, I sensed, the, I know the statue's not intact, but at the same time, I sensed like there's a presence. That's what I mean. Hmm. You know, now I know in my like uh, adult brain, in my adult brain, <laughs> that this yeah, is a piece of rock. Your body still kind of feels stuff like you. Probably... Yeah, no, I'm just saying there's there was a there was a visceral effect that it had on me yeah. that was not uh, part of an analytical process. Yeah. You know, that's what I mean. I guess that's what I'm getting at. And wow, we probably should take a break. Amazing. I think we're probably. Oh yeah, we're probably way over. Yeah, time. we're way over. That's uh, not too bad. Look at that. That's pretty <clears throat> not bad. too bad, pretty folks. Bad. It doesn't even matter anyway. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. whatever we want to do, we can do. It was it was really cool. Um, looking at these statues again, I just will just to to close it out. The precise ones were definitely more impactful. Yeah. yeah, whether it was spiritually or just from an engineering standpoint, it was all of the above. They just really hit you harder. Yeah, just like wow, yeah. it, it was it was incredible. Um. So I think it would be great to get more precise measurements of these ones that are that are that seem to have this precision and compare them across each other. Yeah. It's the same deal with the Serapium. I want to compare them to each other and see what the differences are. Right? Yeah. So uh, don't know if we'll ever be able to do that, but hopefully <laughs> with more new technology it'd be great. All right, we'll be right back. We are back, ladies and gentlemen, for the final segment here on Brothers of the Serp Serpent Podcast. Fastest two hours in podcasting. I've been very much enjoying hanging out here with you guys. It's been a good time. It's been yeah, great. I, yeah. I enjoyed it, too. I love you guys. Damn it. We love you, too, babe. Yeah, we love you, too. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I love you in a different way. Yeah. <laughs> it's only proper. <laughs> No, it's been a, it's been good, and it's. Uh, I just think it's cool to, to discuss it and hear. Other people's questions because everybody that's one of the great things about going with a big group of people is that everybody has yeah. comes to the. To the place with a different set of questions, and going through it doesn't matter you know being there is is great but not being there it's still fun to talk about because people always have a different perspective or a different yeah. um, line of inquiry and yeah, it makes you think. Um, so yeah, it's been, it's been fun. Yeah. One final thing I'll say on the, just to wrap the whole Egypt thing up again, I know Kyle We're wrapped wrapping it, up. it up. Kyle wrapped it up at <laughs> the end of the last segment. I was hoping we weren't wrapping it up. And I'm I saying I'm going to wrap it up now is back to that same uh, sculpture of the face with the head jet on it that I was talking about at the end of the last segment. If those are, if they're, if these are to be taken as representative of something, one thing I noticed with that statue is that the, so the head jet is supposed to be a crown. If it is a crown, then it actually, it is some kind of setup where the only thing that protrudes is the face and this thing that they're wearing actually covers the entire back of the head and the neck. And you can tell this from looking at that statue. I walked all around it multiple times. The what you see is a is a forehead strap that goes down and back to the ears and stops. So if it was a crown, you would expect it to keep going all the way around the back of the head. It doesn't. And then there's a chin strap that comes down from near the ears and goes down below the chin. So there's two possibilities. Either that's her or his head, and she's wearing a. Uh, something around the face or she's got some he or she has got something on where the only thing that's protruding from this article of clothing is the face 
Like a and huge it covers, headdress. Yes, that goes, yeah. it starts from way up at the top of the head jet, comes down, and, you know, there's basically just a hole for the face to stick out from the chin up to the ears and across the forehead. And this thing covers the back of the neck and around the shoulders and everything. That's what they were doing in Fifth Element and in Star Wars. What? Right? Covering the whole yeah, thing? Yeah, wearing big things like that. Yeah, that's true. See? Yep. Sci-fi again. Just yep. trying to point some things out here, people. <laughs> It's just interesting because the, the, the only feature you can see is that strap going across the forehead to the ears and then coming down across the, under the chin. Yeah. It doesn't go around behind the head. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just an interesting feature. And you're just like, is that really? I mean, that's her actual head. Mm -hmm. his, his or her actual head. And there's a top knot. Yeah. On it. <laughs> it's got a top knot. It's got a top knot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we just I, call them the bowling pinners. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The bowling pinners. <laughs> yeah. We talk about them being long yeah. heads and it's like, no, 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 that's not a crown. That's their, that's yeah, their head. That's yeah. their head. That's their top knot. And the top knot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or it is some kind of weird suit. Yeah. It does go and cover. And there's different types because then there's the one with the, you know, the stripes. It comes straight out like this. Yeah. And it goes around. It looks like a helmet. It looks like, you know, Darth Vader's yeah. helmet with stripes yeah. on it. Oh, and the uraeus on that one comes yeah. out off the strap on the forehead. And they too. definitely made jewelry of the, the uraeus, snake the snake. Face yeah, called that. the snake thing. Yeah. They made jewelry like that that had these little, you know, where you could tie it on. And there's, yeah, like, to me, I'm like, yeah, that's cargo cold stuff. It's, right. It easily could be. Hmm. But that the suit I had really some put other much thought into that. Thing. I love the idea that it's a full suit. You know, I mean, now clearly. I just build my beer on myself. <laughs> These statues, we, on video. we see f f complete ones, and they're wearing a, you know, like a uh, a wraparound thing at their waist. They're bare-chested. Uh, so but we just don't know what the rest of that particular sculpture looks like. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it doesn't seem like it, it could be a suit, but it could go, it could, it could actually be supported by the shoulders, like something that goes, that actually sits on the shoulders. You know, so it covers the shoulders, the upper parts of the of the arms, and then goes all the way up the neck. And, you know, because a crown, like if you try to imagine that thing, that head jet, <laughs> as an actual crown, you just sit on your head. No. It's going to be heavy. But if it actually sits all the way down at the shoulders and the face just protrudes from it, that makes more sense. Mm. Yeah, it does. Yeah. I know what you're saying. It's just too big to be an actual, especially some of the ones you see that there's no... I don't think there's any statues of this, but in some cases you see these depictions where the guy's wearing basically a platform on top of his head that has three bowling pins on it and a bunch of other <laughs> yeah, stuff. And you're yeah. like, there's no way <laughs> that somebody could actually wear that on their head. <laughs> That's probably not their head either, though. I mean, right. So, yeah. Uh, I guess if they were making it out of paper mache, <laughs> yeah. it would be all right. Right. Yeah. But still. You wouldn't be able to do do any walking around. <laughs> you should just stay very still. You have no balance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've always felt like those, the various different crowns, like I've, I've I spent some time just looking at all the different ones and they, it looks like you could, you could sort of line these crowns up in order. Mm. There's a progression. There's a progression. So oh, okay. that's what it looks like to me. It looks like there's, there's a couple of different types, but. It's it's almost as though the hedget just with the bowling pin is like the earliest one, and then it at some point it splits into two things, and maybe at first they're straight, then they start to curl out, and then they start to widen, and then other stuff comes up in the middle. It's almost like a flower budding, yeah, in a mm. way. But it looks like and another thing I thought of is that their gates, they the gates are opening up, and there's something coming out like. I'd have yep. to look at them again, but I just remember looking wow, at these thinking so cool. like there is a progression here of things. And of course, it being on the head makes you think of, you know, as the Gaining the person or the knowledge. initiate becomes more enlightened, yeah. then the, the gates are opening and there's their third eye or whatever it is. That's it's cool. all these kinds of things. There's also an upper and lower Egypt thing. For sure. Yeah. The, but isn't it the vulture mixed and up? The snake. Isn't it like the Something about yes, the Nile. Upper, upper Egypt is down south. Yeah. Right. Because it's upriver. That's... Because the river goes... The flows north. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But the upper and lower Egypt crown, and I may be getting this totally wrong, but I don't think so, but the 
you know, so we talk about the bowling pin hats, but also the bowling pin and the champagne bucket. The champagne bucket thing is the is one of the Egyptian crowns, and the bowling pin is the other. So one of those is yeah, upper, man. one of them is lower. And when you see them combined, sometimes that's he's they're king of upper and lower of a, of a unified Egypt. Yeah, that's, yeah. Okay. This is what but they say. Also, Upper Egypt is just uphill. Okay. And it's higher. That's okay. why the river flows that way. But it's south. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it is higher in elevation. Yep. I mean, I don't know what I expected because I don't really know how. I don't know what the whole world is like. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't how know. How dare you? <laughs> So I'm just taking you guys for what you're saying about everything being flip flopped. Yes. Maybe they thought the South Pole was the North Pole. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. We don't know. Okay. We ready for some? Oh, wait, we ready have, my phone. Yeah. Are we ready for the housekeeping? Yeah, we're gonna do some <laughs> housekeeping. Like, do we have ag updates? What have you been doing? Oh man, just trying to get used to being. Yeah, he's not in Egypt. My normal <laughs> shit again. <laughs> he is leaving the house to go to work. I am. I, just I, don't I have know been how going to work. work he's just doing. kind of like. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been working on wine and uh, winterizing more stuff. So yeah, it's winterizing. Kind of I'm labeling. I got a new bottles. blend. I'm. I made a. Uh, oh yeah, it's really the, good. The 2021 tonight. Yeah, yeah, the 2021 uh, red blend. It's going to be the biggest lot we've ever done, 620-something cases. Uh, so I'm real – and I, I did this blend um, by going to every single barrel and pulling out exactly 100 milliliters. Hmm. So I tried to precisely measure 100 milliliters from every barrel. The barrels are all roughly the same size, 59 gallons. Um. I combined all the barrels of one type into various however many sample bottles it took to fill up 100 milliliters from each barrel. And then all the barrels of another type, you know, like the I'm talking about the grape type. So Cabernet, Montepulciano, and then the Merlot. So that I had a, an accurate representation of all of this wine, not just from one vessel, because they can actually taste quite different yeah. from one vessel to the next. Yep. Okay. So I took 100 milliliters from each one, combined them together, all the Montepulciano together, and then filled it sample bottles with it. And then I was able to take those bottles and just make blends. So I'd pull out, like, if, I was, if it was going to be 100%, I'd take out 20 milliliters of something and you know, 50 milliliters of something and then 30 milliliters of something and put them together and that's yeah. 100 milliliters. That's the sample. Mm -hmm. That's the proportions of the blend. Tasted it, went through a bunch of different things and finally, and <clears throat> while tasting and trying to get the best taste, you're also having to make a decision on the economics. Quantity. Yeah. And the quantity is like, how many extra barrels do I want laying around that I'm not blending in here? Yeah. Yeah. So you got to figure out all this stuff. It's it's a It's a, there's a lot of, factors that come into play to dis to make a decision. I wanted one I wanted the biggest lot that I could get. And so I feel like we got that and we got a really good product and I was surprised by how many barrels I was able to combine. Hmm. There's 23 barrels. So it's like 1100 and something gallons, I'm not sure. Gonna so what are we going to have left over? Just some money? Just some cab. I cab. didn't put all the cab in because the cab has this vegetal smell aroma it smells like bell pepper mm. you know some people think asparagus it cab just has this naturally yeah. but the less ripe the grape is when you pick it the more of that you get yeah and so um you know we're forced to harvest because of various pressures and things and there's also economic choices made there um, so we harvest a cab a little early we harvest a cab early and we didn't really have a choice yeah we had to do it. So it has this aspect. And it's just too much to let the cab be its own wine. Yeah, I see. Can't do it. Can't do it. So there's cab left or over. Or we let it age, right? Well, I was like, well, we can let it age for a couple of years. And hopefully that that mm. thing will sort of integrate and get better. But it, we need to produce a product. So <laughs> the, the decision was made. We'll blend 
and we'll blend the biggest batch that we can possibly get out of what we have. And it's actually quite good. I'm it's very, very good. pleased with it. But we what are we all... going to do with the leftover cab? That's what I'm saying. I'm going to stick it in the winery and just leave it. It's okay. We're just going to let it so age. We are going to let it age. Yeah. See if that, the bell peppers so get kicked out. There's only three barrels left of the cab, so we're going to let that age. Okay. And and that's what I meant. That'll What's... be a blending tool for the, for the future. I yeah. may use it in in other vintages. Yeah. Well, go ahead and make your prediction here on the show, <laughs> so we can see if you're right later on. <laughs> How long do you think it's going to last? How long? Oh, I was just saying it would be nice to have this this wine around for like four years or more, right? That'd be great. Maybe in four or five years, we'll still have some of this. Oh, we this won't big, just this sell big out. Lot? Yeah, we did can, you tell them the difference in the lot size? I don't yeah, know because like it. the biggest lot size we've ever done out of our, our estate wines that I think is 150 cases. Mm. And this is? This is like 625. Mm. So it's going to be a lot for us for our estate stuff. So I'm I'm just I'm I'm looking forward to in three or four years being able to bust out one of these bottles and be this is our twenty one. Yeah. So we'll see if you and sell we can out still before sell a few it. years. Well, you know, we'll we'll see. The 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 tasting room people they they can withhold. They'll have enough to where they can say, We're gonna just hold back a hundred cases and we're not gonna sell it. Oh, okay. And then we'll re release it. Right? Oh, like we'll okay. have enough because how many we're going to have more wine coming next year and more yeah. wine coming the year after that so it's like we have a big enough lot to where we can sell now and then we can hold some back and sell later it's just i want to see this wine grow up people <laughs> i want to see this shit typical dad <laughs> <laughs> i want to know what it's like <laughs> in 10 years i'd like to know <laughs> All right. We always slam it all before. It's yeah, that's right. It, no, it just, no, it just right. vanishes. Right. We need to watch selling this stuff it young. Grow. It's like you're you know, right. it's, it would be great to age it. Yeah. And let's teach it. Hey, while it's growing, let's teach it. <laughs> I'll come in and read to it every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that definitely makes. We'll play a difference. classical music. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Russ That's has, the kind of music Russ you has play. no idea what's going on here. <laughs> but you people with kids out there, they you I know like, what you're talking okay. about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh-oh. All right, what do we got? We get down to business. We're supposed to be cleaning house here. I got a Christmas present. Oh, that's right. Well, let's see it. Let's What'd you it. get? Got, sent- Laura got her own personal one-up <laughs> box. Know. What a perfect where, where coincidence. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought. I'm coming on the show. How come my And I got my on? first. <laughs> it's probably the sound bite's not in there. <laughs> Wait a second. It had my name on the outside, and I thought, well, you know, maybe this isn't just for me. Mm. Maybe they just put my name on it. Here it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> one What's up, that for? That's the one up box. Oh. Let me hear it again. <laughs> That's when you, you get the green mushroom. You recognize that sound? Come on. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's what when up? you get the green okay, mushroom okay, on yeah. Mario, dude. Okay, sorry. <laughs> anyway, cut this thing open with the scissors. Boom. For Laura only. <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Let's see. This is the first time this has ever happened. Only for Laura. As I go through some of my several jewelry pieces, I ran across some pieces I thought you might enjoy. They are just fun pieces, but they are snakes. So if you like them, great. If not, re-gift them. I'm good with that, too. Merry Christmas and enjoy. Vicky in Discord, also known as Wild Vike. Uh, VK. V- yeah. I, uh, what, what are we? How do you? <laughs> 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 yeah, it's probably Wild Vicky. But how do you say? Did you say Vicky? She just shortened it? Yeah, it's just VK. Okay. Yeah. Not good with the internet. Link. I don't know either. Don't I'm know guessing. Okay. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> I don't maybe I'm not ready. I don't know. First one. <laughs> wow, look at those. Oh that. Okay. This it's a single piece, but it's a, a bracelet. bracelet. Yeah. Wow. That's really cool. Crazy. Yeah. Awesome. I put it on my arm and I took yep. a video for her. Now you're dancing. you're definitely an Egyptian princess Wait, with like, that thing on. I write with that handsome. <laughs> So look at this. Laura's trying on the jewelry for those of you listening. Oh, yeah, Just we got an unboxing that. here, folks. <laughs> I freaked. You know, 
we need a camera in my room when I open these. <laughs> That's really what we need to do. We need to have like the spy cam. Show us the rest. Okay, Come on, so we got we yeah, got to wrap this up. We got to okay, move on here. Look, look at this one. Look at this one. Oh my gosh. Yeah. On this okay, video. you're definitely Cleopatraizing yourself now. <laughs> look at that one. <laughs> Are now, you I holding your hand up for the camera? She is. She's flashing. Right. She's flashing the uh, bling QVC. at the camera. <laughs> like, dude, QVC, do you know what this is? The uh, infomercial yeah, channel? Yeah. 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 And then, it's like, the one you never look at. Yeah. But anyway, that's what I'm doing. And then look at these. <laughs> like little snakes going around. All right. Are these earrings? Oh, yeah, dude. Giant snake hoop earrings? Ja wow. Yeah. So she said she might Hell find yeah. some more snake stuff. And I said, please send it to me. I can't put those on because I have this. So I come in here knowing that I'm going to have jewelry. And I've been so excited. And then Take the first the thing off. is you guys are like, we do the intro stuff at the end. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to get to have my so snake on my arm this, this whole this, time. This is Laura's... This is Laura's reaction to us putting this segment at the end of the show. She's like, <laughs> I don't get to wear because my she doesn't get to wear her long. jewelry the whole show. Anyway, <laughs> thank you so much. I absolutely love this. I sent her a video. Yes, thing. thank you like, so much. Yes, awesome. thank you. Thank you. I so love much. it when I get gifts when they just know me. You know, I open it up and it's like you've spoken to my heart. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Congratulations, babe. Yeah, congratulations. Thanks, you got babe. your own one-up box. Can Let's you, do Space Weather News. You guys oh. had a great reaction. Good job. Okay, good. From spaceweather.com, a chance of minor storms this week. NOAA forecasters say there is a chance of minor G1-class geomagnetic storms on December 21st when a side-by-side -side pair of solar wind streams are expected to graze Earth's magnetic field. The gaseous material is flowing from a double hole in the sun's atmosphere. A double hole. What no, does it mean? <laughs> that makes you think a big dude. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Current conditions, solar wind speed is 401.1 kilometers per second. The density is 5.58 protons per cubic centimeter. Current sunspot number is 119. The... Uh, Current neutron count is 0.4% above the space age average. That's that's low. Uh, and then the KP index, I think they've changed this because now it's got decimals. The current KP is 1.67, which is quiet. And the 24-hour max was 2.67, which is still in the quiet range. That is your Space Weather News for the week. Thank you, sir. Mm-hmm. No, that was fly by. Whole... Oh. Nope. I unplugged my mic with my foot. I've got a whole uh, giant saving up of awesome news stories. They're so good. But they're on my phone, which is actually the camera over <laughs> okay. here. So. Sorry, folks. The camera, the camera over here. I actually think I may have found my first news story. I'm not going to drop it on us right now because mm -hmm. I haven't fully. <laughs> but I saved something the other day and I thought, could this be? A snake rose news story? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> this is news. Laura has her first snake rose news story. All right. Maybe. All right. Well, we'll have to do that. I, I might bring it in next time I come in. Yeah. Okay. So it should has we... to do with Buddha. <laughs> oh, we're going back to the Buddha topic. All right. So should we? I guess we can tackle a couple of Egypt-related emails. We are. So we are going to have to do at least one communications episode. For uh, sure. When we when we go back to the book report, we're doing a commu communications episode to catch up. Yes. But we have a huge read, backlog of emails. We're going to read some newer emails that are related to Egypt. At least partially related to Egypt. I'm actually not reading any of them. Yes. Kyle can't read them because his phone is being used as a camera. I okay. also can't read. <laughs> and there's that. <laughs> so this is from uh, this is from Pat from the Shire. Uh, he says, hi guys, first hi. things first, well, welcome back from what possibly could be the most scientifically valuable trip anyone has ever encountered in Egypt, next to Chris Dunn, of course. Firstly, microscopes. Holy crap, I nearly fell off my chair. The fact that you guys went and done this, especially in the Serapium, <laughs> could lead to one of the biggest revelations to come out of our so-called fringe community. I'm sure when I say this, that once analyzed... Your data on the inside of those boxes and other objects could completely disprove the mainstream narrative. So bravo to that. And I'm sure everyone who listened to your return podcast with Ben will agree. 
On another note, I recently watched a YouTube video regarding the Antikythera mechanism. It was a sponsored talk by Autodesk. In this talk, they had a British engineer slash museum curator whose name completely escapes me. Apologies. But this guy made the most accurate working mock-up of this mechanism to date. In the talk, he goes on to explain what the mechanism is and how it works regarding the plotting of Venus's location in the sky. The mechanism, from what my feeble 33.3% expanded mind could grasp, cannot accurately lock onto the planet's orbit. The mechanism has a manual override to reset Venus's location in the sky. At this point, the revelation in my email title, which the title, by the way, was Revelations and Lasers, the revelation in my email title hit me like a slap in the face from Yusuf for not giving him a bottle of wine after hours. <laughs> What? He was, Yusuf was trying to bribe people for oh, wine. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's yeah. Right. Velikovsky could be right. Everything he theorized about Venus has slowly been proved correct. And with, his, with this new piece of information, it just adds another piece of the puzzle. If Venus was a large body of material spewed from Jupiter, how long would a steady orbit take to make, thus making the, this mechanism inaccurate over a large amount of time? Anyway, guys, keep up the great work as always. Yours, Pat from the Shire. Thanks, old sport. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. <clears throat> now, my, I'm, I'm about just to using a, my mic. Oh, well. We've got technical difficulties in here, folks, because yeah. we got everything all rearranged. There we, there we go. Sorry, brought me in. It was like we're gonna put a video on you, so we have to like change. make you nervous. <laughs> make me nervous. Change the entire room around. <laughs> oh, it's okay. You yeah. know, I just thought of a good thing about the video, though. If you got to show off your jewelry. <laughs> yeah. That was a really nice coincidence. It really was. Oh. Um, <laughs> she got totally distracted. One thing, another good thing that I just thought about with the video, though, is you're laughing and people can see. Maybe you're laughing. Do we actually think it's funny? Yeah. Okay. That's... There we go. That's actually a good thing. That's about not the video. fake laughing. Yeah. Yeah. There's actually a lot more laughing going on in here than you can hear. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I think that's a good thing. That's a good point. Yeah. Okay. This guy's email. <laughs> yeah. So sorry. <laughs> Poor guy. So sorry, Sorry, Pat sport. from the Shire. Which is, yeah. Sorry, old sport. Uh, my new th I want all the people from across the pond to call me old sport. That's <laughs> just. Kyle says old boy over yeah. here. Old boy. We're, I'm a hillbilly, so old boy. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, what? You didn't have something to say? Go ahead. No, I thought you had a comment. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, yeah. I was just going to say <laughs> the stuff that we did with the microscope, like I said before, it, it was very interesting. It wasn't – I couldn't – You. it's difficult to get good data. Like really to do this properly, you know, you need a, an accurate representation, uh, non-microscopic representation of the area that you're taking. You know, so I just – in other words, you need to know – when you're looking at those microscope photos, you Where need to be able to put. Where on the stone were you? Yeah, yeah. You need they need to be matched like with a map. Like this is this microscope image was taken from this spot. Right. Just almost impossible to do that yeah. in this in the dark in the dark in, in the, the settings yeah. where we were have, being forced to work with this stuff. So the other thing I, I did get very interesting data. I just don't know how valuable it's going to be yet. But the the goal here is to try to get this stuff analyzed. And then I will learn what problems there are, and then hopefully I can correct some of those problems the next time I go and get better data. Yeah. So. And also give credit. I would like to give credit to uh, the uh, some of the attendees. Yes. That actually brought the microscope. That's right. I didn't bring it. Yeah. That's right. Genius. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Thanks for the email, buddy. Yep. Yeah, thanks for the email. Um, next one. This is from Greg. It's called Chiseling in the Great Pyramid. So this is not necessarily related to our Egypt trip, but it is a pyramid question. So okay. I figure we okay. can include it. Throw it in. <laughs> <laughs> Let me have it, old Greg. Greetings. In episode 85... You keep mentioning chiseling chiseling in the shafts. Are we talking about advanced saw and drill technology evidence that surpasses our own, and then they have to clean up work to do with chisels? 
Why also were the door pieces made of copper instead of whatever other metal they had since, as we all know, copper isn't hard enough to chisel granite? Or, excuse me, were they chiseling limestone? So, yeah. What shafts? The shafts in the Great Pyramid. He's listening okay. to, I'm pretty sure he's listening to the Gantenbrink Brink door. Yeah. Yeah. That's all in limestone. Yep. Except for... The King's Chamber shaft. The King's Chamber shaft Where first block yeah. goes through granite. Uh, but the the images that Ganton Brink took up in the shafts where you can see what looks like chiseling on the, the sides of the shaft, they look like chisel marks, and it would be in limestone core blocks. It's hard to properly judge what you're looking at, though, because in the image you're seeing, the shaft looks like a large shaft that you could walk through, and you see what looks like normal size chiseling marks on the side, but it's actually a tiny little square. So I'm not sure how big those Those marks actually are on the sides of the, of the shafts. The other thing is it's hard to tell the difference. I mean, if you took a, um, like a jackhammer and you put a chisel on it and you chiseled away at some limestone and then you took a lime and then you just took a steel chisel in your hand and a hammer and chiseled away at the limestone, you could probably make those things look pretty close to the same. Yeah. Yeah. You just don't know if one's powered and one's not. So I don't, I have no problem with the idea that they chiseled the bedrock out, they chiseled the limestone out. They There's obvious marks of, of chiseling all oh, yeah. over the place. That's right. Like the Serapium tunnels, for example, look chiseled. Yeah. Now, was it a power tool? I have no idea. Yeah. As for the, so he says, why were the door pieces made of copper? Well, we don't know that question. That's a good question. What are those things in the first place? <laughs> I don't even know if it's a door. I mean, I yeah. Is it a door at all? <clears throat> and then he says, can copper or some alloy of it be tempered like steel to get to a harder metal that could then chisel limestone and granite? Well, I think copper, you could chisel limestone with copper. It would yeah. still be. And there are. You go through a lot of chisels. Alloys, yeah. yeah. You would go through a lot of chisels with uh, with the harder limestones for sure. Um, I don't think you can get very far chiseling granite with copper, though. Never done it. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's definitely way harder than limestone. Yeah. So he's, he ends up email saying, fascinating stuff. I guess whatever void the muons found may be a key to unlocking a small part of this mystery, if we can find a way into that Pandora's box. Sincerely from Greg. I agree We're still with that. waiting on that. Still waiting on that data. Yeah. I need to do more work in these various stones. Like Yusuf has this experience, you know, working in all of these different stones. He's hammered them, he's chiseled them, he's used power tools on them. And so it gives him a very good eye to look at the artifacts. And I want that. So one of my goals also is to work in these harder stones, work in these softer stones by hand and with tools and with diamond edge saws. Does uh, he have worked pieces at his sh- store or his yeah. shop that yeah. you can look at? Yep. Yeah. Oh. Um, and I know I just I I know I've told you folks this before, but the just the process of like working on napping flint has taught me so much about what I see on the ground in, in, in the flakes and in the, in, in just in the patterns in stone itself, um, the way it flakes, the way it breaks, um, uh, with flints and other silicates like that. And so I can, I mean, I recognize work from some stones when I see them in Egypt, you know, just from doing the napping. Well, there was that, there's that, piece that you talked about in the museum where you're like they made perfect enormously long flakes oh my one God. after the other and you're like yeah and you're like okay i've done napping like this is very hard to do and they did it over and over and over again exactly all the way across the, the place same. exactly the same <laughs> i have no idea and i sent it to all my buddies and they were just like w t f you know it's like <laughs> these guys that are all into the arrowheads yeah. and stuff they're just like this is yeah, Egyptians made the best arrowheads in the world, folks. Yeah. Hands down. The best 
Nap, napped flint. Flint. They are objects. Not arrow, they're swords. <laughs> yeah, they're freaking swords. <laughs> the arrowheads that I've seen that came from Egypt at Johnson's house, Bob Johnson's house, I was just like, Yeah, those are Whoa. Yes. Yeah. Those yeah. are awesome too. Dude, those blew my mind. Those yeah. are out from out in the desert. Blew yeah. Blew my mind in the yeah. bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> He's just buckets of them in his yeah. bathroom. You're yeah. just like, I hate You're just like you. sitting down in the bathroom. Secretly, Bob Johnson. You're like, what is I'm all really this? Right now. <laughs> <laughs> you just want to swim in them like Scrooge McDuck, right? Just yes. Psh- yes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Come out as ground meat. Yeah, you would. <laughs> you would. <laughs> you would. Okay. Next, are we are we done with yeah, these? Next. Yeah, we're done. The time is up. Let's. let's <laughs> Jeez, we're, we got. Uh, we got producers. Yes, we do. Let me pull it up here. We're really bad with three of us in here, folks. The tangents are flying. <laughs> I would like to say I'm not blaming that on you, babe. Don't I'm not. I was gonna say something else. <laughs> okay. I would like to say I would like what? to shout out special thank you to all content creators. I know you put a lot of time and energy into what you're doing. And there's a lot of us that get to benefit from that. And I think that's badass. So if you're a content creator, props from me to mm. you <laughs> for doing the hard work, you know? Definitely. Thank you, babe. Thank you. I mean, I'm talking to you nice. guys. But no, but I, he's not it. talking to I'm us. Saying, I know. <laughs> I'm saying thanks for that yeah. statement. I agree. Yeah. I mean, you guys do a good job, too, but I'm just trying to tell, <laughs> I'm just trying to tell the world of content creators. And we got, I think we have quite a few here. Yeah, we're going to have to. Might need to edit this down. Um, <laughs> damn. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm going to start wrong here. With just saying all of them. I'm going to start here. Uh, executive producers of this show. This is amazing. Gordon Plant. Thank you. He was on the Egypt trip with us. I actually roomed with him for a while. What's up, bro? What's up, buddy? Thank you so much. Hundred bucks. And um, let's see here. Uh, Anonymous. Yes. <clears throat> Five hundred bucks. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anonymous. You know who you are. Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. Wow. Warm and fuzzy is all the way down. Um, <laughs> do I read this? I'm actually curious. Tri- <laughs> Trivest. Trivest Incorporated. 100 bucks. Gave us 100 bucks. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. If you wanted to remain anonymous, sorry about that. <laughs> Triple vest. <laughs> Is that wanker? <laughs> I, don't <know. laughs> I don't know, but I, I have an awesome vest from uh, Super Dry. <laughs> and. Uh, Tara Lee Sanders, $100. Thank you so much. Alessia Voronova, $100. Uh, What's up? Thank you. How are you doing? Thank you so much. She was also on the Egypt trip. Yeah. And um, I think that's it. Is that it? Wow. That's all the, that's the executive producers. Those are the executive producers. And then we have Claire. Who was also on the Egypt trip as an associate executive producer for 50 bucks. Thank you so much. Thank you, Claire. Claire. (laughs) Claire. (laughs) And I think that's it. Thank you guys so much. Unless I didn't go far back enough, but for some reason it's not showing me any further back than that. There might be more. We'll figure it out. If if we missed you, we'll do make goods on the next episode. Oh, look. There it is. Past 30 days. Let me just check real quick. Yeah, just check real quick. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Yeah, thank you for allowing them to do what they <laughs> love, all of us to do what we love. This is... Do we do Dreams these? are I coming think we true those, all the yeah. time over here, you know? <clears throat> Dreams are just coming we might true. Have, I don't know if we did Peter. I know some of these were for the um, the baggage fees for the instruments that we brought on the Egypt trip. Thank you very much for that. Yeah. Uh, you're still getting executive and associate executive producer. I don't think we show. did Peter. I don't think so either. Peter's an executive producer as well. Okay. Peter BB, $100. Yes. Thank you, sir. 
Yes. And also we want to thank Paul Hasslinger. Is That's that... right. Paul came, what, like he showed up with his family right when we were leaving for Egypt. So we didn't get to meet up, but he went on a tour of the vineyard, went to the tasting room, had a great time uh, with our with our buddies over there. And then he left us a box of gifts. So thank you so much, Paul. We really appreciate that. Yes. And also he regularly donates to the show. Yes. He is a, he is a recurring donor through PayPal. Yeah. And I wish we would, could have been there when he came through. But I, I mean, know, I know. Hey, Egypt. Sorry we missed you, bro. Yeah. Egypt's very important. <laughs> well, there's his total. I don't I let's just make him an executive producer. Of I the thought show, we right? have before. Oh, we already did that, bro. Sorry, you just got <laughs> X <X-nayed at laughs> I could be wrong. It's been a month. <laughs> we'll give it to you on another day if we haven't done yeah. it. <laughs> Thank you so much, bro. And we heard that you and your family were lovely. Also, yes, uh, by because they they came to the vineyard and got got a tour and did that's all right. That, so, I appreciate that. That's right. All right, guys, I think that wraps it up for this week. Thanks for coming great. on, Laura. Okay. Thanks. Thank Everything you for coming. I could have asked for, yeah, it was great. You guys can get a hold of us, brothers of the serpent at gmail.com website, brothers of the serpent.com. Support the show if you can. We do the value for value model. So if if you get value out of the show, you can always give us value back through PayPal or through Patreon. We do have a Patreon page and there is Patreon content. So if you uh, if you donate to the show through Patreon, you can get a lot of the bumper music, you can get lots of you can get some of the funny little excerpts we've done, some of the commercials, and you can get Patreon episodes when we do them. So we do we do a Patreon episode maybe once a month or less. But we're trying to do more. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> once, once a, a month, month or, or less. less. <laughs> Sounds like a good motto. Yeah, guarantee. Yeah. Guarantee. <laughs> once a month or less. I like it. <laughs> we're, we're increasing the Patreon episodes for sure. Uh, what else? Hey, we're increasing a lot of things. Thanks to the here. Discord. You guys were a blast while we were in Egypt. It's always a blast. Oh, my if God. You want, the memeing, yeah, the memeing so of hard us. Yes, so we're awesome. like, we just post stuff like, please meme this photo, and they would just go to town. And they would just beers it. Like, yeah, like, it was amazing. I, I love so many beers that you guys So if you guys, I appreciate if, it. if you're listening to the show and you're not a member of our Discord and you want to hang out in, a, in an internet chat server with tons of channels and tons of different snakes, people who listen to the podcast, Sign up to Discord, go to the website, and click the connect button, and you'll join our Discord. You got to pass a test to prove you listen to the show because the Discord is for people who listen to this podcast. It's not a hard test, I think, but you can easily pass it with a little research and a little listen. If you're a total noob, call Chris James, <laughs> he'll tell you the answers. 1 800 Chris James. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. We love you. Always have. Always Always will. will. Good night, Adama. Get back to work. There we go. I love you the most. That's the part I screwed up. I jumped in, there was something else, and that's what I was supposed to say. She loves you the most. I love you the most.